And we say good morning to you. Welcome aboard. We're live at Champion Chevrolet, the Tom Taylor Sports Show, after a day off. And, boy, we're back and ready to go. Had a great day. By the way, I want to say give a big shout-out as we get ready to crank it up here. We've got a full show, and uh, we're very excited to be here again on this Thursday. No question about that. It is a great day to be at Champion Chevrolet, and it's a great day to tell you about our brand-new show. It's tonight. It's the Maiden Voyage. It'll be a lot of fun. We're very excited about it. So, again, we will... Talk more about that in a second. Number we're talking about it right now. Champion Chevrolet show coming up. The five star football preview show, and uh, boom, here it is, uh, right there. Champion Chevrolet five star football preview show every Thursday night at six o'clock, right here on Facebook Live. And so it'll be tonight. Can't wait. We'll be here, uh, co-hosted by Dave Angie, and so he'll be here a little bit later on the show. We're going to be talking about that, and it's going to be a busy night, fun night, and a chance for you for the picking panel. we got the picking panel started already for you to get in there and try and win, and so, uh, boom, let's hit it right there. Enter each week during the football season. A new winner announced every Thursday at 6 o'clock, and so we're going to win at least 25 bucks, if not more, working on uh, – uh, at least 25. We're going to kind of up the ante, and we've got to, not this week. It all starts for next week, but the picking panel uh, contest is out there already. The games for next week are already posted. Uh, of course, Alabama, Georgia Tech, Florida, Michigan. You're right, right down the list. We've got five high school and five college that you can pick now through next Thursday. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. So. Uh, again, we're here. Glad to be with you at Champion Chevrolet, the number one Chevy dealer in the state. Nobody sells more Champion or no more more Chevys than Champion from Mountain City to Memphis. And so, last week, of course, up at Bristol Motor Speedway, had a great week up there and had a blast. And it was uh, a lot of fun. Very blessed to be a part of that great team. Had a great crowd, great racing. Of course, yesterday we were off, and that's what I was going to tell you about. Uh, before we get into the show, we were at the Appalachian Fair yesterday with a little person going through the uh, school tours. And I just want to tell you, they do a phenomenal job out there. It's very educational. Kids learned a lot. They didn't ride any rides, didn't do any carnival. It was the educational aspect of the Appalachian Fair, and it was very, very good. And so uh, kudos to Ed Bowman, young man who gave the uh, lecture, if you will, or the, or the talk on sheep. Kids learned about sheep, went to another station, learned about bees, all about the bees and, and how they pollinate. It was very educational, even for an old old kid like me. Uh, also, they did a station on uh, dietetics and how the kids should be eating right, drinking a lot of water, and why it was important. And so, and then we had one uh, station put on by the Washington County Sheriff's Department about safety uh, in and out of a vehicle, which was very, very good. And then uh, we went to the barnyard nursery and lunch was provided. So great uh, kudos to the Appalachian Fair and the folks out there, Kathy Byers and the folks make that go. It was just a great time. And so. Had a good time. That's why we parked the show yesterday. But we're back with a vengeance on show number 580. Now, coming up on the show, at the bottom of the hour, going to be joined by Howard Stevens, a former NFL running back. He's going to join us live from, I believe, today's in Louisville, Kentucky. We'll talk a little NFL football. He's also a motivational speaker. And we're going to learn some more uh, cool things about how to be a success in life and how this guy went from – uh, kind of a meager start. At one point, he was the shortest man to the National Football League to being an NFL star. He's going to join us at the bottom of the hour. Greg Salyer also will be joining us this hour, talking about Major League Baseball and the MLB updates since we weren't at Chick-fil-A yesterday. Carmichael joins us later on, and then Dave Angie. Again, he'll be our co-host of the show tonight. It's the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview. We're talking high school football. We're talking college football. Even though college is a week away, there's still lots going on in college football. All that coming up here again on the show. And, of course, our very first guest will come out of the break here. And we'll come right back and give our first guest uh, his day in the sun. Our buddy Steve McCauley from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is here. And he is uh, – ready to roll as he always is and so we will be joined by him coming up here in just a second so this is show number 580 day number 24 and we unashamedly dedicate this show to the man on the cross unashamedly it's just that simple and so today's verse john 8 12 says i am the light of the world just look around <laughs> we need a light and he is the light although we sometimes put him on the back burner but he is the light i am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life and so that's the uh, verse of the day to get it all started here on the tom taylor sports show again one more plug as we always do for pantene beautiful links.com again growing the hair for that reason it's going to get to the appropriate length which is soon and to have it cut off and donated to uh, pantene's the hair product company they're going to in, in turn make a make not just with my hair but weave it in with some other folks hair to make uh, real hair wigs for ladies going through either radiation or chemotherapy going through cancer lost my biological mother my father and my stepmother to cancer so it's my way to get back 
in a little way, but it's it's a way nonetheless to say that I'm contributing to uh, folks who are going through a tough time with cancer. So anyway, that's what we're doing. PantenBeautifulLinks.com. So always give a plug to the to the hair when we get a chance. Quick break. We'll be right back. We will talk to my man coming up later in the show. We got college football. We got the NFL. Got a couple of preseason games tonight. We've got the NAACP upset. They're going to go talk to Roger Goodell about the Colin Kaepernick scenario. Let me just go ahead and tell you, this is my take on this. This is not the National Football League's problem. This is uh, each individual football team has the right, as you would if you owned the team, of who you want to play on your football team. And if they don't want to go get Colin Kaepernick because they don't like what he did with the National Anthem, they don't think he can play, they think he wears two left shoes, they think he can't chew bubblegum and walk, for whatever reason, it is up to each individual football team's discretion as to who you go get. And so at this point, nobody feels like Colin Kaepernick can fill the needs they have on their particular football team. It has been turned, apparently, for what I'm reading, has been turned into a situation where uh, he feels slighted because nobody's picking him up, and he feels like it's the National Football League's responsibility to make sure he has a football team to go play for. Not even close. Nope. Uh, if I try for the teams and nobody gets me, nobody picks me up, how can I get mad at the National Football League? Apparently nobody thinks I'm good enough to play on the football team for whatever reason. So anyway, NAACP is going to meet with Roger Goodell. We've got more to talk about that. Uh, the Florida Gators talking about naming their starting quarterback. Uh, NASCAR news, the 77 ride now has all of a sudden become very, very uh, intriguing, I guess to some folks that are looking for a ride next year, namely Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane. We'll talk about that. All that and more coming up. Quick break. We'll be right back. Steve McCauley joins us next, our first guest. We're live here at Champion Chevrolet. We're doing a double dip today. Coming back tonight, our first installment of the Champion Chevrolet. Let me hit that one more time before we go to the break, and it is right. Boom. The Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview tonight. We'll have that right here again live in the showroom at Champion every Thursday, beginning tonight from 6 until 8 o'clock. Steve McCauley joins us next on the Tom Taylor Sports Show, show number 580, brought to you by the good folks from Grip Energy Drink. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best in broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. It's Chevy Summer Drive to unbelievable savings at Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. With a selection of over 600 new Chevys to choose from, don't miss out on the Chevy Summer Drive sale. 17 Silverado Crew Cab 1LT, 11,000 off MSRP. 17 Equinox Traction Traverse, 5,000 off MSRP. 17 Cruise and Sonic, 25% off MSRP. Shop us online 24-7 and don't forget our Saturday parts and service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City where we leave you asking, how do they do that? At Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, they treat thousands of patients each year dealing with diabetes and its effects. Diabetes overtaking our nation and leaving a path of destruction behind. Through wound care, office visits, and preventive care, they see most of the patients after a problem arises. Using diabetic footwear, such as shoes and inserts, a great way to prevent or prolong skin breakdown and amputation. At Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, they use only custom molds from patient mold inserts, which further ensure a great recovery, or better yet, prevents a wound from happening. They use custom molded shoes, bracing, custom inserts, and extra depth diabetic shoes to prevent wounds or other skin issues from beginning. Call today, 1-800-524-4447. 39 years, six locations, one family. Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, 1-800-524-4447. Any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Over 10 to choose from. Perfect for having the gang over to watch the big game, birthday parties, church get-togethers, backyard gatherings, everything from fruit trays to garden salad trays to nuggets and chicken strip trays. And for the sweet tooth, try the cinnamon cluster or chocolate chunk cookie tray. So you see, any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A at the crossings in North Johnson City. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually, 
on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed, one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. live again guess who's with us yeah you probably got that figured out already you can hear him in the background there we go so we're we're doing a little photo op so he can send it off to the appropriate people uh we always appreciate my man steve in the house and he is here let's bring him up and he is where is he He is boom he's right there and no you don't need me you need him on there we're live again at uh champion chevrolet as we always are on thursdays there we go look there uh, look right there no. Yeah. It says all in. Yeah, all in. All in. Oh, I like that. All, yeah, in. all in. Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Good stuff. And of course, we're live here again at Champion Chevrolet, and nobody sells more, as we tell you every week, nobody sells more Chevrolets in this state originating out of here, the Tri Cities, than uh, Tim and Andy, and the guys and ladies here at Champion Chevrolet from Mountain City over to Memphis, number one Chevy dealer in the state. We're very proud to be here. Every week on Thursdays, now every Thursday night, the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview Show. Tonight we got Doug Frisch checking in, giving us all the ball games. We got Dave Anjis going to check in with the Big East Conference, which is DB Science Hill. We've got Kevin Harmon going to check in with us, talking about UT. Joe Avento is going to be with us, talking about East Tennessee State. And by the time we go on the air today. We will know the name of the new football stadium at East Tennessee State. They're going to name it at 5.30 in a press conference or unveil the name. And so uh, they've got a new athletic director. Scott Carter assumes the duty September the 1st. So Joe's going to be talking about that next week. Not this week, but next week when the Hokies get ready to battle West Virginia. We'll have some folks calling in from Blacksburg to give us a Hokie update every week. So lots going on. We're, we're excited about it. Steve's here with us. Good morning, sir. How are you? It's I voted for the Tom Taylor Stadium. There you go. Didn't work. <laughs> no, it's, oh. No matter what, it will not be that. Now I'm gonna start. I'm gonna say something right here because to me that is the most been in the media almost 40 years. That is to me is the most asinine thing to take. I, I did too. I really did. Thought it's gonna be funny that they would take a guy off a of broadcast because his name. Robert Lee, I don't know if you heard the story, ESPN commentator, ESPN, ESPN or that's pulled him off of a ball game that was going to be in Charlottesville because of his name. Because, yeah, he's an Asian American. It's just, it's like, where does it stop, I guess is my question. And, and it's just like we've opened up Pandora's box. And the, uh, in my humble opinion, as my late father would say, to a certain degree, the inmates are, have, over, have overtaken the asylum. So I just don't get it. But anyway, it won't be Robert Lee. It won't be the Tom Taylor or the Steve McCauley Stadium. No, it won't be Mac won't be McCauley Memorial. So, But we'll find out tonight the new football stadium name again at East Tennessee State. But we've got a golf tournament coming up very, very soon. Tell me all about that at the FCA. Yeah, we've got the uh, a golf classic. I don't even know what annual one it is, but it's, it's amazing. We've been doing these for uh, over 20 years. And we've got um, – uh, it'll be my 13th year uh, being on staff here in the, in the area for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And we do a spring and a fall golf tournament. Our fall golf tournament is at the Johnson City Country. Been 16 years. 16 years. Wow.
just like you said about the culture going crazy, you know, in our media, um, our, we're sports crazed. Mm-hmm. We, we, you have a, you have a whole platform because of sports, mm-hmm. right? And we have a whole platform because of sports. And they built a multi-million dollar stadium over there that they're going to unveil the name of because of sport, you know the sports craziness. Mm-hmm. And I say great. It's great that we're a sports crazy culture because it allows us to inject mm-hmm. the industry into that. Mm-hmm. We'll do it. Absolutely. Now, I'm, I'm guessing he didn't have seven of the same shirt in his, in his drawer. He had the same shirt on every day. He had the same shirt on every sure. day because he didn't have seven. Let's call it like it is. Yep. So, so uh, we, you know, a kid like that, that's a great kid that you could come around and, and give him an FCA t-shirt or give him a couple of shirts or just say, hey, man, let, let's uh, give him a Walmart, you know, gift card or something for Christmas. We've got needs out there that are beyond spiritual needs. Too. I mean, we're, meet, we're, we're trying to meet the spiritual needs of these kids, but Jesus FCHICs.org will be there broadcasting live again on that 11th. That'll be a Monday at the Johnson City Country Club. We were there last year, had a good time. We'll be back in there this year and, and looking forward to it and promoting it. So uh, it's all good. And again, the website is FCHICs.org. That's right. There you go. We've got to take a break. Come right back. He's waiting on us. He's going to join us. Former NFL running back Howard Stevens says, Are we on? Are we on? So 
Man's in the house. We'll find out today. It's the Steve McCauley Football Stadium at East Tennessee State University. <laughs> M-C-C-O-L-L-E-Y, McCauley. No, I got it right, didn't it, on the screen? Yeah, it's right. Thank you. That's good. So, quick break. We'll be right back. Good job. Enjoy your, by the way, got him a grip, lemon lime. And so, love this guy. Love everything he's doing in the organization. So, another new school down at the South Central Elementary down on 107. That's uh, near the Moody Dunbar. It used to be the Moody Dunbar Pepper Plant and Farmer's Daughter and, and uh, beautiful Tell you one thing, uh, it's beautiful in the springtime. If you want to take a beautiful drive, get on 107 when the leaves turn, and just go down and drive down through there. And if if uh, if you oh yeah, if you doubt there's a God, drive down that road and see the the way the mountains lay and, and the river and all that. I'm thinking, Phew, and he did all this in six days. It's incredible. So anyway, quick break. We'll be right back. We've got Howard Stevens joining us live from Louisville, Kentucky. Next on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. It's Chevy Summer Drive to unbelievable savings at Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. With a selection of over 600 new Chevys to choose from, don't miss out on the Chevy Summer Drive sale. 17 Silverado Crew Cab 1LT, 11,000 off MSRP. 17 Equinox Traction Traverse, 5,000 off MSRP. 17 Cruise and Sonic, 25% off MSRP. Shop us online 24-7 and don't forget our Saturday parts and service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City where we leave you asking, how do they do that? At American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the eight areas of your vehicle that takes constant continuing education is the air conditioner on your vehicle. Well, you would think that AC would be a simple one, but it's getting to be uh, a lot bigger than just AC. It's it's the management of the system, not just AC, but heat and everything. It's a lot more computer controlled than it used to be. It used to be just a little button on the dash that you pushed. Now there's all kinds of electronics involved in that. Braking systems it used to be fairly simple. Now, some of the newer vehicles, you have to have a computer to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in the, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. It's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import and Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today.
order to actually operate the braking system to make sure that it's okay after you've worked on it. Computer control in the, of the engine is becoming very important. There's a lot to that. Each one of these areas, are, the, the technology has just tripled and quadrupled in the last few years. It's hard to keep up. You really need to stay in the books and know what's going on with them. American Import Auto Repair, Johnson City, open six days a week. Call today at 913 913- At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. Then here are the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance. We follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400. Your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. Any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Over 10 to choose from. Perfect for having the gang over to watch the big game, birthday parties, church get-togethers, backyard gatherings, everything from fruit trays to garden salad trays to nuggets and chicken strip trays. And for the sweet tooth, try the cinnamon cluster or chocolate chunk cookie tray. So you see, any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A at the crossings in North Johnson City. Back live again to the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thanks for being with us. We're live here at Champion Chevrolet. Show number, uh, what, 580. They said it wouldn't work, and it's working. Thanks to Jeremiah. He's uh, helping us out again this morning behind the scenes, as always. And so let's go to the phone. You see on the screen Howard Stevens, a former NFL football star with us. And good morning, sir. How are you? I'm wonderful, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic. You and I met a couple of uh, a couple of months ago at Chick-fil-A here in Johnson City. You're in town to be a motivational speaker and do a motivational visit so uh, for folks that are going who's Howard Stevens well Howard Stevens is a really cool guy so tell us a bit about yourself and and what you're doing right now then we'll get into the NFL well uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of those kids that put on a, a football uniform and and had the dream of playing in the NFL and I got the opportunity to play five years in the NFL with the New Orleans Saints and the Baltimore Colts and kind of most of my life has, has centered around that 
athletics and uh, you know in high school I met a beautiful young woman she was a cheerleader I was a football player we got married and we've got three kids and seven grandkids and 45 years later she's still my girlfriend so awesome uh, I am just just excited and happy to be uh, as fortunate as I've been all my life Absolutely, and so you got a chance to play in the National Football League, and so you've had a chance to go around, and you still do, and give motivational talks about that. So tell us, uh, tell us how you incorporate that into your talks, as from a motivational standpoint. Uh, you know, I'm one of the smallest players that ever played in the league, and I tell people when you're two feet tall, and you know, you're not going to be able to tell people that you're going capabilities than uh, they are willing to give themselves credit for. They have to look deep inside oftentimes, and many people aren't willing to do that, but if they look deep inside and willing to work and willing to dig, they can go and probably do anything they want to do. And uh, that's all I did to get to the NFL. I just put my head down, did everything I could, worked as hard as I possibly could, and took advantage of every opportunity I was given. And it worked out for me. How many times along the road, again, uh, we're talking to Howard Stevens on the phone, former NFL star with us, and we're going to have him on on a regular basis. I love this guy. How many times were you told no? How many times did somebody try and discourage you and say, Howard, man, I appreciate your heart, but you're a little guy and you can't play in the NFL, and why don't you go do something else? How many times were you discouraged by people? Well, if I had a dollar for every time, I'd probably, uh, be, probably ranked three. <laughs> Talking to Howard Stevens again on the phone with us. You see on the screen the former NFL star coming up. Greg Salyer joins us with a Major League Baseball update. We're here live at Champion Chevrolet, the number one Chevy dealer in the state of Tennessee. And, you know, just like you, what you're talking about, folks would say here in Johnson City in East Tennessee, you can't sell more cars than, than uh, Chevrolet lots in Memphis and Nashville and Knoxville. And yet here we are, the number one Chevy dealer in the state. We sell more than any other city, any other dealership, and, and over 50 dealerships in Tennessee. And so I'm sure they were told the same thing along the way, Howard, that you guys can't be number one because you're up there in little old East Tennessee and Johnson City. But guess what? Well, they worked very, very hard, and they are the number one every month, month in and month out, to the number one Chevy dealer. I have, a, I have a little saying, those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those who are doing it. You who that is good. Let me write that, let me write that one down. Go ahead and say that one again. <laughs> those who I love that. Say it again. Those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those who are doing it. Those, those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those who are doing it. There you go. I love it. So, hey, the NFL, we've got preseason tonight. You've got Miami, Philadelphia, Carolina, Jacksonville. Preseason getting ready to crank up. As a former player, too many exhibition games. Uh, should we shorten those? Uh, preseason good? You, you know what? When, when I played, we actually had six exhibition games. And I, I think it, uh, it's probably better to have one exhibition games, you need them because you need to practice, you need to work, but it's a, it's a big boon for the, uh, you know, for the owners because they can charge full price for a game where they yeah. less than what they normally do during the regular season. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, a, there's a formula in there somewhere, and I'm not sure I'm close enough to the game to really figure out what that formula is, 
guys need to practice, but guys don't need to get hurt in a game that costs nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I watch a coach late in the game, and he's managed the game like it's a regular season game. What I would do, and I know winning is important, but what I would do is try to minimize the amount of plays that I have. Let's get off the field and get back to practice. Does that make sense? So I think two or three preseason games, maybe with an additional week of practice, might be an alternative. And if you're going to play 20 games, make 18 of them count. There you go. We're talking to Howard Stevens. So, in fact, one of the questions I want to ask him here in a minute is, if he was running the NFL, what would he change differently, do differently? But uh, heading into the season, I guess, uh, if you look across the board, again, it's the Patriots to lose. Everybody keeps saying they're going to repeat and, and they're dominant. So, you feel like they can do it again? Or who do you feel like will challenge them this year? Well, if I were if I were to go to Vegas and I had to bet my hard-earned money, I would probably put it on the Patriots. I'd probably put it on the you know, the Packers, mm. you know, the league is, is, is pretty, um, I don't know, pretty predictable, except for injuries, and when injuries start entering into the, uh, into the equation, uh, things happen, uh, Brady gets hurt, you got Garoppolo behind him, but is Garoppolo Brady, if he was, he'd be playing, mm. um, <laughs> and then you've got some teams that, you know, are, are, are they're strong, with their first 22 guys, but then they drop off if they get an injury to a key guy. So you're looking at Green Bay, you're looking at New England. Uh, Carolina uh, has the possibilities because they were year, there, you know, two years ago. Um, and I, some of the teams that moved, the teams that went to L.A., I think you can discount that a little bit because of, of the fact that they're just, they've been disrupted. The teams that do well in teams that have some stability, have some harmony, and have, uh, you know, a track record to run on. So if, if I had to pick, I'd say New England, and, and it kind of pains me even to say that, though. <laughs> not, I mean, they were in our conference, and I'm not a New England fan. I understand. What about what about my boys out in Oakland? You think they're going to turn things around, or are they just, are they just uh, smoke and mirrors? Last question before I let you go. We're talking to Howard Stevens again coming up next. Greg Salyer talking Major League Baseball. But if you were the commissioner for a week or a day or a month, what would you do to change or improve the product known as the National Football League? Well, first of all, I would love to get the commissioner of Salyer for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I can get that done. If I get 10%, I can do get that done for you. Listen, you can get, I, I don't know, you, you can get 25% or 50% if you can get that, get that done. I'm in. I'm in. I would try to, I would try simply to uh, kind of get the, the penalties out of the game. I look on every kicking play, every kicking play. I was involved in the kicking game. <laughs> as a punt and kick returner and sometimes uh, covering on special teams. Uh, and every kicking play, and I just just watch it from now on uh, forward, there's a penalty. There's a flag on the field just about on every kicking play. Mm-hmm. Good point. Uh, so I would try to eliminate the penalties in that area. I would also try to eliminate the, 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 the subjective value, the, the subjective choice of what is and what is not pass interference. And um, one more thing that I would try to eliminate is this illegal contact after five yards. I mean, you got you got third and 15, and, and the defense has done a good job of, of stopping you, and then all of a sudden a receiver runs out, bumps into you, 
and the defensive back gets called for illegal contact and you've got a first down. Mm-hmm. Somehow that's inequitable to me, even though I was an offensive player. I'd like to see both sides of the ball have an equal opportunity to do their jobs and perform. Uh, and maybe they've got surveys or, or knowledge that I don't have that fans would prefer that the pass interference is be called so they can score touchdowns. But being the competitor that I am, I'd like to have an even playing field. If the defense is better, the defense wins. If the offense is better, the offense wins. And not have it uh, determined by penalty, so to speak. And I just think that sometimes the referees are out of position. The referees maybe not even uh, (laughs) fast enough or quick enough to keep up with the game and the athletes. I would try to eliminate penalties more than anything. And the last thing is, it seems like the game has gotten in, away from what it is. A serious, fantastic opportunity for competition. It's gotten into politics and it's gotten into uh, areas that I just wish that this was not. Let's go play a football game and if you have something to say, which is great, we live in America, let's say it somewhere else. Let's not say it on the football field. That's um, my opinion. I'm right there with you. I would let, let guys know that <laughs> I would let guys privilege to play the game. you got about 2,000 people playing the game at any one time when a country of over 300 million people live. It's a privilege and not a right, and I hope that we could somehow do a campaign to help the guys playing understand that it is a privilege and not a right. And they get, That's kind of where I would go if I were commissioner. And they get paid a lot of money to be a pri- to have a privilege of playing the ball game. You're exactly right. So, my oh my. my friend. Thank you for your time. I'll get you back on real soon, and, and you're awesome. Thank you, sir. I'm glad I met you. I'm glad our paths crossed. Thank you, Tom. It's been a pleasure, buddy, and uh, any time, my friend. You're a good man. You're a good man, too, and I'll talk to you soon. Appreciate you. Okay, buddy. Bye. Yes, sir. Howard Stevens, again, former NFL running back. Boy, had some great, and he's exactly right. He said everybody has an opinion to say what they want to say, but don't let football be the platform to do it. Do it on your own time, and, and I agree with him 100%. Uh, but uh, as I said at the outset of the show, the NAACP is going to be having a visit with Roger Goodell, the NFL, over uh, Colin Kaepernick and the national anthem. And I'm going to say it again before, as I said, before we go to the break and switch gears to baseball. Uh, if Tom Taylor is not good enough to play in the National Football League at any, you know, what would I be? I guess I'd be a tight end for my size. So, okay, uh, I'm out there shopping myself and nobody wants me. Well, it's not because of who I am. It's because I'm not good enough to play on the team, I think. So even there may be more to it than that. But, you know, again, it's each individual team's discretion to pick up or draft or sign the players they need to have to, they feel like, feel the bill to get where they want to, which is to win a world championship. That's the goal of every team. So if I'm not good enough, it's not the NFL's fault because I'm not good enough for whatever reason that nobody's picking me up, whether I got long hair or I wear cowboy boots or or I'm just not very good on the field for whatever reason that is the discretion of each NFL football team period Uh, and as Jerry Jones says down in Dallas he said if you're going to play for my football team you're going to stand up you want to check for me you're going to stand up you're going to address the national anthem as it should be he has that prerogative if other owners say well uh, we're going to sit down and negotiate and talk and whatever then that's their that's their freedom as well that's why we're in the greatest country in the world that's based on democracy and based on freedom but again, to go to the commissioner's office and say he's not getting, he's not, nobody wants him to play on their football team. What are you going to do about it? It's not the NFL's decision. I mean, that's not their, that's not what they're there for. That's my opinion. What we're here for is take a break, come right back, and talk to Greg Sally about baseball. We had a no-no last night. It was a crazy game between the Dodgers and the Pirates. We got an update on Daniel Norris. We've got the wild card standings coming up. We got all kinds of baseball next. With my man Greg Sally, you're live at Championship Chevrolet on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. 
American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City. Takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. At Breast Orthotics and Prosthetics, they treat thousands of patients each year dealing with diabetes and its effects. Diabetes overtaking our nation and leaving a path of destruction behind. Through wound care, office visits, and preventive care, they see most of the patients after a problem arises. Using diabetic footwear, such as shoes and inserts, a great way to prevent or prolong skin breakdown and amputation. At Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, they use only custom molds from patient mold inserts, which further ensure a great recovery, or better yet, prevents a wound from happening. They use custom molded shoes, bracing, custom inserts, and extra depth diabetic shoes to prevent wounds or other skin issues from beginning. Call today, 1-800-524-4447. 39 years, six locations, one family. Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. 1-800-524-4447. If you're catching some waves or just playing in the yard, it is important to protect yourself. You may not feel the sun's heat, but UV rays can still damage your skin even in cloudy weather. Blue Lizard Sunscreen, recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide. Our SPF 30-plus formulations use only the highest quality ingredients for broad-spectrum protection. As a reminder to protect yourself, our bottle turns blue when UV light is present. Blue Lizard, we've got you covered. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. I'm Tom Taylor, and you are Dave Angie. And we got coming up, it's a really cool every Thursday. It's the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview Show. Get you ready for high school and college football every week. Every Thursday, you're going to be covering what for us? Be looking at the Big East Conference. Ooh, that would be Dobbins, Men's Science, and all those great football teams in that conference. Doug Fritz will be giving you the rest of the high school football picture every week. Then we got colleges covered. Who are we going to be covering? Oh, we got ETSU. We have Tennessee. We have Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. All those. Carmichael's will be along to give us the big five games every week because it is a five-star football preview show. So hope you'll join us every Thursday right here in the showroom of Champion Chevrolet. Hey, Tim. Dave and I will be co-hosting the I'm just going to leave sit up here. Is that okay? Just come back. No and then on top down. of all that, we're going to have a picking panel where you're going to match us against you and you I'm against push us. The truck, I can't so wait push. because... They don't have a chance. You're going to go up against us. We're going to pick against you for some really cool prizes, and they don't have a chance, do they? No chance at all. It's going to be fun times. Oh, yeah. Putting toe to what? Toe to the leather, man. Toe to the leather, man. Ready to go. Can't wait. Again, join us every Thursday right here. It's a maiden voyage cool show. Co-hosted by Dave Anji and myself. It's the Champion Chevrolet 5-Star Football Preview coming up every Thursday right here from Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City. Can't wait to see you on the show.
And so that's going to be tonight. Can't wait. We're going to be here broadcasting. We've got Doug Fritz going to check in with us. We've got Carmichael to check in with us. Kevin Harmon's going to be with us. Going to be co-hosted by Dave Angie. So it's all tonight. Can't wait. The first installment. And the picking panel's up and running, too. You can start the picking panel right now. And so you can go and uh, the games we're picking will be for next week. And so when we start college football and high school football, it'll be five high school and five college. All you have to do is go to the website, TomTaylorSports.com, and click on the contest. And, again, you just go down there and pop, 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 pick the – we don't we don't scores. This one who you think is going to win. And so you can do that even now. And uh, we'll be awarding the winner of the first one coming up, uh, oh, gosh, week after next, I guess, after we get through the first Labor Day weekend full of college football. Alabama, Florida State, Tennessee, Georgia Tech. Who else we got on our Florida, Michigan? We've got West Virginia, Virginia Tech, and the Black Diamond Trophy Bowl, and then we're playing for the Black Diamond Trophy. I think the fifth one is Texas A&M, UCLA. That is the uh, college. The high school would be Hampton, Happy Valley, Dobbins, Minden, and Science Hill, Tennessee High, Daniel Boone. I can't remember what I have in front of me here. We've got five and five, and so you can go there now and start picking even as we speak, and we're talking about the games for next week. So very excited about that here at Champion Chevrolet. So our show's tonight from 6 to 8, and uh, right here where we are in, right now. So uh, like us and share us, and we'd appreciate that. I know Champion is already, so we're very excited about that as well. Champion Chevrolet, the number one Chevy dealership in the state. Right now, the 2017 Silverado 1500 Double Cab 4x4 All-Star Trucks. Again, uh, let's see, $9,000 discount and a rebate. Again, uh, on the 2017 Silverado 1500 double cabs, hate to be a negative Nelly in a doomsdayer, but uh, I saw where the farmer's almanac said for the southeast this winter, uh, cooler temperatures and more precipitation. Now, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I think that would usually translate to snow, and so cooler temperatures and more rain or more precipitation. Why am I telling you that now here in August? Now would be a good time to come in and get a truck and get ready because if it starts snowing and get a lot of wintry weather, these trucks will go. Also, the 2017 Colorado LT 4x4 pickup, uh, $2,000 rebate, $2,000 discount, so you're saving four grand right off the top on that 2017 Colorado LT pickup 4x4. Again, nobody sells more vehicles in the state of Tennessee with the Chevrolet nameplate and, of course, the folks here at Champion Chevrolet. And of course, last week up at Bristol Motor Speedway, uh, trucks all over, the Chevy trucks are all over the parking lot and uh, hauling the trams and the shuttles and the, and the uh, drive a lifetime. We introduced the drivers and all that, so it was just great. And so Chevrolet, again, Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile here in Johnson City. Boom, he's here. Let's get him on camera. And Carmichael's here. We're going to get in here and have a big time talking football here in a minute. But this man's here talking Major League Baseball. And good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Hey, Tom. I'm doing great. How about yep. you? Good. Yesterday we were at the fair, went with the school tour with a little one to the Appalachian Fair. So we parked the show. So Greg said, yeah, I'll come on Thursday and talk baseball. So got a few minutes here to go. And gosh, where do we start? Let's start last night with the Dodgers and the Pirates. What a night. <laughs> was that not crazy? Rich Hill. Tell me about it. Yeah. You know, that that was a, that was an amazing game. Uh, perfect game there through eight innings. And uh you know, I, I actually turned it on there and just in time to see the uh, error there in the ninth inning uh, by Logan Forsyth at third base, and I uh, felt really bad for that guy. You know, he 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 was doing everything he could, but uh, yeah, the error cost him the perfect game. And then, of course, in the tenth inning, he lost the uh, the game entirely. <laughs> Not just the no hitter, but uh, lost the game with uh, Josh Harrison's walk off home run. Uh, fantastic game. You know, as we're watching. That the last inning there of the game, I, I was telling Hannah, I said, "Hey, look at the score, it's zero zero, and um, knew it was coming up." You know, you know who I thought of immediately? I thought of Harvey Haddix. Remember Harvey mm-hmm. Haddix, mm-hmm. the guy that threw uh, twelve perfect innings and then lost, lost the game in the thirteenth. He was uh, the Pirates too, wasn't he? He he played for the Pirates. He yeah. played for the Reds for a while. He uh, I think he was with the Pirates when he when that happened, um, but uh, um, but he. Uh, yeah, that's who I thought of immediately when uh, when he lost that game last night. As a competitor, as an athlete, I mean, how crummy would you feel to get to that point, do that well late in the game, and just lose the whole thing all the way around? So if you're Rich Hill, the starter for the Dodgers, I mean, he's a paid professional, but still he's a competitor, and you got to – I'm sure he's bummed out because he was right there on the cusp of doing something really cool. Went nine innings, gave up one hit, one run, struck out ten, and lost the game. So Pirates get him one nothing. Let's run down the scoreboard from last night. San Francisco doubles up Milwaukee 4-2. Philadelphia shuts out Miami 1-0. Cubs beat the Reds 9-3. to 
Mets over Arizona 4-2. Salvador saves them, and they just let it go. Seattle <laughs> defeats Atlanta 9-6. Houston 6, Washington 1. We'll talk about that series here in a second. That's a, that's a big series. It's the number one in the American League West and, of course, the number one in the NL East right now playing. Houston got them last night 6-1. to one. Cardinals over the Padres 6-2. Colorado beat Kansas City 6-4. to four. In the American League, <clears throat> excuse me, Baltimore over Oakland 8-7-12. to seven and 12. Red Sox beat Cleveland. That's another big series in the American League. Best American League East against the best American League Central right now. Red Sox got them 6-1. to one. Yankees all over Detroit 10-2. We've got an update on Daniel Norris here in a moment. Uh, Toronto 7, Tampa Bay 6. White Sox over Minnesota 4-3. And it was Texas defeating the Angels in Los Angeles 7-5. to So that's your scoreboard from yesterday and last night. And you look at those two series right now. Anything? I mean, do we put much emphasis on Houston, Washington, and Boston and Cleveland or not? Probably more Boston, Cleveland than, than Houston, Washington, just because of the interleague thing. But, um, it, you know, I, I think when it comes down to the playoffs, and I think both of those teams will be in the playoffs, um, you know, I would have trouble picking who I thought would, would win that um, in a five-game series. So, uh, you know, I, I think look at, at what they're doing now, see what happens. Um, you know, Cleveland's had a, had a rough week. Um, they've lost some players this week to injury, and uh, especially Andrew Miller. I mean, that was a blow. But, um, you know, they, they've lost some guys this week, so they're kind of hurting. But uh, if, if I had to pick one of those teams in a, in a five-game playoff, I think it would be a toss-up at this point. Carmichael joins us coming up here in a few minutes. Also, Dave Bonji a little bit later on in the show. And also, Cletus Green from your champion, where, as you see on the screen, talking to Greg Salyer with the Major League Baseball update. What we need to know for the Players Weekend. Tell us about the Players Weekend. Yeah. What's, what's that all about? Players Weekend. First time Major League Baseball has ever done anything like this. And, um, you know, it's an opportunity for the players to, to show their individuality, uh, let the fans get to know them a little better. They, they're they going to be wearing uh, very non-traditional uniforms, more of a, a little league look to uh, the uniforms that the players are going to be wearing. Each each team is involved in this. Uh, the players get to pick a nickname to wear. They'll also have a, a patch on the sleeve in which they can write in a, a player or a person in their family or someone who has impacted them on their way to where they are in their career. Um, you know, and, and, and we're going to see a lot of interesting nicknames on the back of these jerseys. You know, some of them are the ones that, that we uh, expect to see, like Jose Bautista, Joey Bats is what it's going to be on his jersey. Uh, Andrew McCutcheon is going to have Kutch. Carlos Gonzalez, Cargo. You know, so some of the ones we typically see. But then, you know, I saw, saw this one. I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, the third baseman for the Mariners, Kyle Seeger, he's going with Corey's brother. Hmm. That's going to be on his jersey this weekend. So... You know, I thought that was kind of cool. And so what would be on the back of your jersey? What would be your nickname if we put one back there for you? Wow, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. You know, in high school they called me Junior. I don't know why, but I had a friend that called me Junior. And it uh, stuck. Yeah, it kind of stuck. I don't know. Just just with him, nobody else called me that. Yeah. But, um, so, I mean, what? You know, so I don't you know. You have a nickname around the house? The girls? It's just dad. Just, just daddy's the only thing. Yeah, but daddy so on it's there. All, it's so. all here. Yeah, that'd, that'd be a good one. I'll take it's, that one. It's kind of cool because I get you know I, the traditionalists are saying, nah, this is kind of silly." But and I don't. I guess we'll see how it goes. But at least you get a chance to do a little creativity and a little uh, individuality, I guess, in a team sport. I guess is the point of doing this. So. Uh, we'll see. It's kind of a trial balloon, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, they've not committed to doing it again after this year, so we'll see. Uh, you know, if it, if it goes well, I think we will see it again next year. But uh, there, you know, there's there's no guarantees that that's going to happen. So we'll see what happens. And plus, you know, uh, the the game worn jerseys are going to be auctioned off on MLB.com, and 100 percent of the proceeds are going to go to the uh, Youth Development Foundation. So uh, it's going to a worthwhile cause. Back on a regular schedule next Wednesday, so he'll be with us at Chick-fil-A. Don't forget tonight, the champion Chevrolet five-star football preview. Our next guest will be part of that tonight. Carmichael will be joining us by phone, talking some college football. He's going to join us here in just a second as well. So we're pretty excited about it, pretty stoked about our first show. Once again, as Howard Stevens said a few minutes ago, those who say it can't be done should get out of the way of those who are doing it. They've told me this show wouldn't work. They told me a football preview show on Facebook would never work. Tonight's the first show. We're doing a champion, and Champion Chevrolet jumped all over. Yeah, we love to do that. So we'll do that tonight from 6 to 8. Carmichael's be one of those uh, 
valuable guest and contributor is going to have every week. So, wild card standings. Got a couple minutes left here before we bring him in. And yeah. wild card standings and Daniel Norris. What's the very latest? Okay, well, the wild card, you know, in the National League, it's Arizona and Colorado. Colorado, though, um, has not been playing very well. They've lost 22 of their last 28 games. And, uh, you know, that. This is typical for them, but uh, I, I do think that they're going to compete till the end of the season. I don't think that they're going to completely go away. Um, we've seen it before with them, um, but then again, they've they've turned it on at the end of the season and won 20 in a row. So uh, it's hard to tell what they might do. Uh, love that race, though. You know, it's it's really the best race in the National League, other than maybe the Central Division. But uh, you know, Milwaukee's three back and St. Louis is four back. So, uh, you know, good opportunity there. But the American League is the one that's really exciting. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we've got about seven or eight teams that are really in this thing. Uh, with the Yankees in Minnesota, if the season ended today, who would be there? But, uh, you know, don't count out Kansas City and the Angels especially. And, and of course, Seattle's really in a dead heat with the Angels as well. Um, I know my daughter would really like to see Mike Trout in the playoffs. She's talked about that a lot. She said, Daddy, he's, he's really never really had the opportunity, and she'd love to see that happen this year. Well, you look at them. You've said this earlier in the season, so is Carmichael when we talk about baseball. Is the fact that the Twins a year ago had over 100 losses, and here they are duking it out, and they're in the, they're in the hunt, very much in the hunt, for a wild card spot. And, and so not totally out of the race as a whole in the Central to begin with, but certainly in the wild card. So kudos to the Twins because they've, they've obviously cleaned out the front office Anytime you do that, you're on a learning curve to begin with. So they've brought in the right people, obviously, got this thing pointing in the right direction. So and the Twins may be the story of the year as far as the comeback team in the in Major League Baseball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, they're four games over 500 right now. And, and who would have thought that after a 100-loss season last year? Before we talk about Daniel Norris, let's run down the schedule real quick. Let's you know what's going on day games. Again, uh, in the National League, Arizona and New York, Miami and Philadelphia, Colorado and Kansas City, the Dodgers and Pittsburgh. Tonight under the lights, the Cubs in Cincinnati, San Diego at St. Louis. And again, uh, Strasburg and Old Dallas will hook up. That. That's a pretty good one right there now, is it? That's a good game. Is it not Strasburg and Old Dallas going to hook up? I just call him Old Dallas. So <laughs> his last name is Keichel. Keichel. Old Dallas Keichel. At 11 and 2, and Strasburg at 10 and 4 tonight. That'll be a dandy in Houston. In the American League, day games: Yankees at Detroit, Toronto at Tampa Bay, Colorado at Kansas City. Tonight under the lights: Boston and Cleveland wrap up that series. Minnesota at Chicago, and Texas at Los Angeles. We're mentioning the Tigers again. They're struggling, and they're currently uh, 54 and 71. They're 15 out and sinking in the Central. What's the latest on Daniel Norris? Well, Daniel Norris uh, threw 64 pitches in his uh, last rehab start there on Monday. Uh, they're hoping to get him up to the 80 to 85 range uh, this weekend for uh, another rehab start. Hopefully then uh, September 1st he can pitch uh, probably the bottom end of that uh, doubleheader that they have with Cleveland. And uh, hopefully he can, he can pitch well enough to stay in the rotation at that point. I think for his longevity in the Major League Baseball, he's got to come back with a vengeance. He's got to show them something because, you know, you're getting ready to draft some new kids next year, and there's always a bumper crop of new ones coming. So you've really got to solidify yourself on this rotation. So I think it's imperative that he comes out and really does well this time out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's, he's going to have to have that bulldog mentality, I think, when he comes back and uh, show them that he deserves to be there. All right, Church House, what's going on this Sunday at the Church House? Yeah, working on this series on um, When God Changes Your Name. And uh, this week, we're going to be looking at Hosea's kids. So, mm-hmm. you know, God named them, and then he changed their names. Mm-hmm. So, a uh, pretty powerful passage, actually. Great sermon this past Sunday. I was wandering around being deputy deacon, and it was, uh, got a chance to hear it was good stuff. He was on it. Thank you. Like a like white on rice, as they say. He was on it. We'll take a quick break. Give me some taters. You, next week, you're back to the chicken shack for yeah. this food. Yeah, I'm going over there right now. There you go. Wish I'd go with you, but I'm going to talk to Carmichael coming up next. We'll take a break. Carmichael's got the latest in the NBA. Man, what a crazy week of the National Basketball Association. Got a little NASCAR news to talk about and all kinds of a little tidbits for Carmichael. Then don't forget, coming up tonight, he'll be right back with us and be talking college football front and center by phone. Quick break. We'll talk to Carmichael next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show at Champion Chevrolet. At American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City, one of the things that owner Tim Smith is most proud of is their hard-earned certifications. We are an ASE Blue Seal shop, which is important because what it tells the customer is we care enough to get certified, not in one certain area of cars, 
you have to be certified in eight different certifications in eight different tests you have to take and you have to be updated on them yearly to to make sure that you're uh, up to date we not only have one of those we have three ASE master technicians here with the ratio goes into a ratio and it, we're a blue seal shop so uh, it tells you that we, we care about training and we care about knowing about your car we want to help fix it right American Import and Auto Repair West Market Street, Johnson City, home of the free loaner car program. Open six days a week. Call today, 913-3111. Hi, I'm Rob Cole with Bays Mountain Park. There's something for everyone at Bays Mountain Park. Whether you're an outdoor enthusiast or simply looking to get away and relax, Bays Mountain Park in Kingsport, Tennessee is the perfect destination. For only $4 per vehicle, enjoy 3,500 acres of breathtaking scenery, featuring 40 miles of hiking trails, wildlife habitats, one of the southeast premier planetariums, and much, much more. For more information, please visit www.baysmountain.com or call us at 423 229 9447 Bays Mountain Park one of the Tri-Cities best places for learning leisure and recreation if you're catching some waves or just playing in the yard it is important to protect yourself you may not feel the sun's heat but UV rays can still damage your skin even in cloudy weather Blue Lizard Sunscreen recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide our SPF 30 plus formulations use only the highest quality ingredients for broad spectrum protection. As a reminder to protect yourself, our bottle turns blue when UV light is present. Blue Lizard, we've got you covered. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. Back live with the Tom Tony Sports Show. Thanks for being with us. Let me run down real quick. Carmichael settling into the seat, getting ready. We're going to talk a little NBA right out of the gate, but let's talk about a couple of specials going on right here. Uh, again, one of those nameplates. 2017 Malibu LTs here at Champion Chevrolet. Again, a $5,500 discount plus a rebate. You're going to save $5,500 off of a 2017 Malibu LT. And there's one of the great salesmen right there, Mr. Jay's in the house. Jay A's. Hello, sir. How you doing? He's one of the good guys. And so also Malibu's on sale. They've also got another nameplate, the 2017 Impala LTs. You can save yourself, uh, what, seventy yep, $7,700 or 22% off the sticker MSRP of all 2017 Impala four-door LTs in stock. So there's a couple of those nameplates, Malibu's and Impala's. And then also the 2017 Camaro. We talked about this last week and up to the Speedway, too. That next year, NASCAR is rolling out and Chevrolet is rolling out the Camaro, bringing it back as the car for the Chevys and the Chevy drivers next year. Well, they got them on sale here. The uh, Not the one you drive at Bristol, but the 2017 Camaros. Again, you're looking at, uh, what, a $4,200 discount on all 2017 Camaros in stock right now. And, of course, they sell a ton of trucks. And the one I, I like is the 2017 Colorado LT 4x4. Where you're going to save four thousand dollars walking in here and shopping again at Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile here in Johnson City, or you can shop online at championjc.com. Carmichael's in the house, ready to go, and bring him on board. And love having this guy. We didn't have him last week. We're up the track, and there he is on the screen. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Man, it is nice, and I'm not sure it can get any better than this. It's a little breezy. Uh, the humidity's down. 
Uh, just a gorgeous day. It's not fall yet. It's kind of that tween between late summer and early fall. But as he said, blue sky, beautiful day here in the neighborhood. And so, oh gosh, let's start with the NBA. Big switch, a little switcheroo, if you will, between Mr. Irving and Mr. Thomas. And what's your take on all that between the Cavaliers and the Celtics? Well, I think, you know, <clears throat> Kyrie will add something to Boston that they didn't have with Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah was an explosive scorer last year. But he was also, he's even, you know, Kyrie's not the best defender in the world, but if there's anybody worse, it's Isaiah Thomas. So they're losing on the defense. They're gaining a little bit there on the defensive end. But, but they're also, in, in Thomas, he's a 29-year-old player, a lot of injuries, has bounced around. The Celtics was his fourth club in the NBA. You just wonder, he was going to be a free agent at the end of next year, at the end of the 17-18 season. Kyrie was being shopped around even before he even asked for a trade. The rumors were he was going to be part of a big four-way deal that would have brought Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, and Eric Bledsoe to Cleveland during right at the beginning of the trading and free agent period. He was upset about that, so he wanted to go. I think he – I've thought all along he didn't want to be the last guy out of Cleveland when LeBron leaves. There you go. Most people think, oh, he wanted his own team. He wanted to be actually – Instead of LeBron telling him, putting him in the corner and saying, okay, we're, here's what you do, he wanted to be a player where he could dictate there. Now, in Boston, he's not going to be able to do something like that because Brad Stevens runs a pretty tight ship. They like to move the ball around. But I still think it's an addition for the Celtics. The big thing with Cleveland, you're getting you're getting uh, Thomas. He should give you enough scoring. They've also signed Derrick Rose to play as a backup point guard for next year. They're bringing in Jay Crowler, who he'll come off the bench, be the sixth or seventh guy. If you get the Jay Crowler from two years ago, you're getting a guy that gives you a lot of defense and a lot of scoring. Last year he scored some. His defense wasn't up to par. But they get that number, They get that first-round draft pick from Boston, which is Brooklyn's draft pick. That could be that could be Cleveland's ace in the hole. If they get to February, think they need one more piece, look at Brooklyn, and maybe Brooklyn's playing halfway decent, maybe even contending for a playoff position. Maybe that you use that first-round draft choice to go get a player, maybe a, a Carmelo. Maybe to New Orleans if they decide what, you know, they're not going to keep both uh, Boogie Cousins and Anthony Davis. Maybe they make that type of deal. They've got that in their pocket. Or if Brooklyn doesn't play well this year, maybe they say, okay, LeBron's leaving. This is our re- This is a chance for us to rebuild. Here's the softball question of the century as I throw this one to you. True or false, LeBron had input into Isaiah Thomas coming to Cleveland. I'd say LeBron had input into Kyrie leaving Cleveland. <laughs> they were just trying to make, trying to find the, the best deal for him. I sure. think all along they were trying to go to – I think originally they were trying to go to Phoenix. I think they were wanting the uh, – I think that was where they wanted the first place was to go to Phoenix. They wanted – they were trying to get Josh Jackson and Eric Bledsoe and maybe a number one pick. And the Suns weren't really apprehensive about making that trade, especially giving up a young player like Jackson and giving up a pick. Boston had the extra picks with they've got this this year still coming. And they had the Lakers pick in the, uh, that they made the trade for to begin in the draft this year. And Boston had some players. Now, Boston still got some work to do. They've, they've only got four players left from their team last that was on their team last year they've got to get some work on the inside al horford is a center masquerading or is a yeah center masquerade forward masquerading in the center he's really a power forward a number four instead of a number five they don't have that in boston so they're going to be looking at any free agents coming up and maybe they've still got some draft picks maybe they're not done dealing yet with anybody we're talking to Carmichael. We're live here at Champion Chevrolet. Again, we're here at the Tom Tony Sports Show. Show number 580. Said it wouldn't work, and here we are going strong. We're looking uh, – we're not that far away from number 600. Uh, we're uh, – obviously, you do the math, 20 shows out, which is roughly another couple of weeks. We'll click off our uh, – 600th show here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Tonight is the maiden voyage, the inaugural of the Champion Chevrolet. Let me bring it up and show you right there. Boom. Uh, whoo, there it is. Who win the next big game? Guess correctly, win a $25 prize. The picking panel is up already for next week's games. We got some good ones. We'll let Carmichael talk about that next week. Tonight he's going to talk about uh, just some college football notes as uh, he'll be with us, one of our guests. And uh, the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview Show every Thursday at six o'clock here on Facebook Live, and I'll do what, what they call in the business as a tease. Well, you do. 
as a tease. <laughs> the, the, the tease tonight is we're going to be looking at five coaches on the hot seat, and we're going to be looking at uh, <clears throat> some early premier games, not first week games, but games in the in what I think are the three best conferences this year: the SEC, the Big Ten, and the ACC. Mm-hmm. And probably look at two games, in, two three games in each league. <clears throat> yep, that will be games that you want to be looking forward to coming up on the schedule. Yep. And, and so we got college football coming up Saturday. We got BYU and Portland State mm-hmm. and several other games. Uh Oregon State and Colorado State, I believe it is. I have to double check. I've got Stanford is playing, I think, in uh they are. in New I think that's a, the New Zealand game, I believe. They're going somebody's going to New Zealand to play Saturday. Yep. I got that and, here we go. Right here. You're right on it. So this is why I got him on the show, the guys Oregon State, Colorado State. You've got Stanford and Rice. Uh, that's coming up this uh, this weekend on Saturday, and then next week it'll get started early. But we'll worry about next week, next week. But yeah, for a couple of ball games this week: Oregon State, Colorado State on Saturday at two thirty, and at ten o'clock on Saturday evening, Stanford the Cardinal and the Rice Owls will be and, looking up. Yeah, so. I believe that is. I believe that is in New. I believe that's the game they're going over to New Zealand to play. Yep. Show the. Show the Kiwis a little bit about American <laughs> American football. That's like we, we used to have used to be the New Zealand oh. uh, sheep herders back in the day in <laughs> professional wrestling. Oh, the Kiwis down under. Show them a little yeah. football. All right. So speaking of football, there's my man Austin. How you doing, dog? How you doing, man? I'm How doing good, man. Sean. So what do you think, my boy? About my Raiders, real quick. What do you think? The Raiders gonna be just fine. Right? <laughs> you got it. Win, lose, or tie, my Raiders will die. Austin, he and I, he me and him like them Raiders. And so they got the Cowboys this weekend. We'll talk about that because that's his team against my team in preseason. But let's talk a little NASCAR. All of a sudden, the number 77 ride that Eric Jones gave up to move over to Joe Gibbs, it's vacant. There was talk a couple of weeks ago about Barney Visser just shutting it all down. Well, now that particular ride with Martin Drex Jr. as his teammate, all of a sudden it's gotten some appealing uh, looks from – both Matt Kenseth and Casey Kane. Uh, Kenseth is one of those guys that will, will be a sponsor's delight. They love Kenseth because he works very well as a sponsor. So uh, what do you see there? Do you see him staying vacant? Do you see I, somebody going to get that seat? I have thought all along it was a trade. Uh, Eric Jones for Matt Kenseth. Just not a you know not a formal trade, but a trade. I still think Matt Kenseth will end up in that in that ride next year. Your take last week on, at the sweep of Kyle Busch, people are still talking about it. You know, this is what I've heard out here in the community since you know since the races. You know, we don't like the guy, I and mean, he's arrogant, he's pompous, he's this, he's that. But when he's behind the wheel, the guy can drive a race car. Even Darrell Waltrip said he did things up there last weekend I've never seen him done at Bristol. He said, "I, you know, I'm kind of the king of the track, and this guy put on the show." What's your take on Kyle Busch? Well, he is the new king of Bristol. He has been the king of he has been the king of Bristol really since probably uh, Darrell Waltrip or Rusty Wallace have. Really giving up? I think he's he's the king up there. He has he something he's got tuned in with all of his everything he drives up there. It could be a truck, it could be a Xfinity Series car, it could be a you know a Monster Series car. He's got it tuned in up there. Well, what Kenseth said, and I never even thought of this, but he said, you know, it's hard enough to win one. But he said, in essence, I thought it was a great analogy talking about his teammate Matt Kenseth says, okay, Friday night, I'm sorry, Wednesday night truck race. Carmichael's a crew chief, totally different crew. Friday night, Xfinity race, Tom Taylor's a crew chief, totally different pit crew. Saturday night, Tim Copenhaver's the crew chief, totally different pit crew. He said, it's tough enough to win one race with one. He said, in essence, you're interchanging an entire, and he used the, the uh, analogy as a football team, you're changing the coach and the offensive line, three separate nights, and you still go out, still go out and win the football game. Here's how I look at it. You know, you've changed – offensive linemen in New England the last 15 years. Mm-hmm. You've changed wide receivers in New England the last 15 years. You've changed running backs in New England the last 15 years, but who haven't you changed? Mm-hmm. Tom Brady. It's the one, the constant, the one thing, and it's and it's Kyle. It's him. It's not the, you know, who would say that you would put another driver in his place and you'd have the same success. I think it's the driver as opposed to the, to the teams. Of course, being up there doing the PA, I mean, I'm sitting there watching and I'm just – 
I'm just dumbfounded because the guy got put back in the back of the pack, both the truck race and Xfinity race for speeding and the pits, speeding penalty, came roaring back up to the field and then qualified 18th on Saturday night, which is a terrible qualifying. And then, uh, well, not terrible, but could have been better. And then roared up to the field and won the race then too. And, of course, he was in a position not only to win all three races, but he won two out of three poles. You know, if he is set to pole, for the uh, cup race on Saturday night, that that's never been done. A driver come there and get all three poles in the same weekend. So, bottom line is they move on. They're off this week, getting some downtime before the crunch time. There's a lot of pressure on a lot of these drivers. We've got the playoffs right here. Uh, the guys on the outside looking in: Chase Elliott, Matt Kenseth, Jamie McMurray, Clint Boyer, Joey Logano, your guy, Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, Trevor Bain, and Dale Jr. These guys on the outside looking in with two races to go. I'm going to make one prediction. If Joey Logano does not win in Darlington or Richmond, I would not be surprised if they if his crew chief isn't let go. Oh, really? I'm just saying this. You win a race, you get yourself into the playoffs, and now because of a violation that your crew chief has, has happened, now you're not you're knocked out. You know now you have to win yourself back into, and eventually that's back up to you. But somebody is going to take the fall for him not if he doesn't make the, the oh, playoffs. Well, that's great somebody point. is going to take the fall for that, and I think it's going to be the crew chief. And it wouldn't surprise me the Monday after Richmond if he doesn't win the next one of the next two races. Off this week, the Bojangles Southern 500 next Sunday, then to wrap up again the regular season, the final two races to qualify for the chase. The Federated Auto Parts at Richmond on a Saturday night, September the 9th. Then it all gets started in Chicagoland. Trucks off this week. Cups off. The Xfinity Series is racing. Road America in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Uh, Michael McDowell, the defending champion of that race. It's the Johnsonville 180 from a year ago was Michael McDowell, the uh, the winning driver. So uh, NASCAR with a week off and pressure's mounting. You've got, again, Kenseth is out of a ride. Of course, Edwards has not come back, at least this year. But you got Casey Kane out of a ride. So those are two big names that are – and Kurt Busch has not re-signed yet. No, and, and that's, uh, they're trying to get they're trying to get him to lower his price. Exactly. And, Take a pay cut. Yeah, and he doesn't want to. So now, you know, musical chairs, there's a good chance Casey Kane may be driving. In, if he wants to stay driving as an active driver, he may be in, have to start out in the Xfinity Series next year just to be able to hope somebody gives him a ride – come back later on nfl preseason football tonight we have any putting stock in it or not it's just another couple of games you're going to see uh starters play maybe a quarter quarter and i mean more of a half this will probably be the last chance some of the starters will play and you just wonder now with the change in rules at the nfl now you don't have to cut you only have to make the one cut in the past you have two or three cuts before the, your final 53 man roster now you don't have to make one cut well why take a chance on putting somebody out there and getting them injured in one of these preseason games? Mm-hmm. Why not play that third and fourth string quarterback all the way through till the very end? You look at Pittsburgh, they've not played Roethlisberger yet. Now, tonight may be, or this week may be his chance to play. But if he doesn't play or play much this week, he's not. you know he's not going to play next week in the Thursday night games. Tonight, the Dolphins at Philadelphia, you'll probably see some more Jay Cutler tonight, more than you've seen before, in Philadelphia against the Eagles, and the Panthers in Jacksonville to battle the Jags, so that's your two NFL games tonight. And Our boys play see, each other on Saturday. Tonight. And you're not going to see, uh, I don't believe Cam's going to play tonight, no. and if he doesn't play, they're definitely not going to play him next week, so he won't play until week one, and you know Andrew Luck is out probably, I don't think Andrew Luck will be back with Indianapolis till at least week three or four. Coming up tonight, Carmichael will be joining us again on the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Preview Show, talking about the five coaches that are on the hot seat, and or could be, or no, they are on the hot seat, and the big games coming up in the Southeastern Conference, the Big Ten of the ACC. Not not just the first week, but uh, throughout the course of the season, of course, none bigger. And I was reading earlier today, uh, this is the first time in in memory that. A number one is playing a number three preseason, or not preseason, but the, the first game of the year. It's huge, Alabama, Florida State. Yes, I mean, it's t- you've got two teams that may end up still back in the Final Four coming up this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a big game for it's a big game for both big game for Florida State. It starts a run for Florida State where they've got they've got Alabama, and then a couple of weeks later they've got Miami. Mm-hmm. So right off the, in the first month, and that's before they get to Louisville and Clemson. Yeah. So oh, it's, that's a it's a it's a huge huge game with huge implications. You look at ACC. You've got Florida State, Virginia Tech, Louisville, Clemson. I mean, defending national champion. Pretty solid. Uh, ACC is pretty solid football. And Miami. Miami. You've got Miami, yeah. North Carolina. 
Uh, that are also good teams. NC State. Yeah. So you've got some teams in the com- in the conference. The ACC really thinks and it's it's taking its claim as the best conference in college football. You'll join us tonight right around seven o'clock, correct? By phone. Yes. You got it. Oh, Parks and Rec. What's going on, with Parks and Rec, right now? Uh, we're still taking some late last minute soccer registrations. Uh, we our soccer season starts. Our soccer season starts uh, this coming Monday. We've got that coming up. We've started our uh, softball, adult softball season, and we're getting ready for just some fall programming. Yep. It's all good. Website is? www.myjcparks.com. Love this guy. We go back a long, long way. And tonight, they're going to name the football stadium at East Tennessee State. You and I did it. How long ago was we were doing games? 1985. Gosh. The oh. year of the the powerful 0-10-1 <laughs> East Tennessee State Buccaneers were the, the only uh, non loss they had that year was a tie against Jerry Falwell's Liberty University. Kelvin Edwards the Liberty that, played, that played for some time with the New Orleans Saints and the Cowboys as a wide receiver back in the late 80s and early 90s. Kelvin Edwards was on that Liberty University team. Yep. A tie, I think it was either a 20 or 23 all tie in the Dome that year. The only game, the only non-loss the Bucks had, but they also had the game where they led at Kentucky yep. going into the fourth quarter yep. and a 13-10 lead, and Kentucky comes back to beat them up there on for Kentucky during Kentucky's homecoming weekend. We were there on that one. Yes, in a very, Stadium. Yes, that was a uh, <laughs> that was a, an I would say an eventful weekend. I got, but one one the the most pleasant the most the most pleasant event of that weekend was got to meet. Uh, Happy Chandler, former uh, Major League Commissioner, was Commissioner of Baseball when Jackie Robinson broke in in the in 1947, and was also the former Governor of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. He was still alive, and it was like the it was like that line in the Big Jake movie. I thought you were, or I thought you were a lot taller because I mean <laughs> I went to shake his hand in my head. I thought, man, the pictures I saw of you in the 40s, you looked like, and he didn't come up to me. Yeah. So happy channel. Yeah, that was a great time. We were traveling together then. You and yeah. I, the late Wayne Hicks and uh, Mike uh, Boylan. Coach Boylan, and, yes. And Boylan. Coach V. Yes. Goodness, we could <laughs> write a book. But we won't. What, what uh, happened on the road stays. <laughs> stays. What, happened on, what happens with the Bucks stays with the Bucks. <laughs> We'll take a break. We'll come right back. We're live at Champions Chevrolet. We're getting ready for the inaugural Maiden Boys tonight. Cannot wait. That would be this one right here, the Champions Chevrolet five-star football preview show. Uh, there it is, too. We've got the picking panel ready to roll, too. Uh, Anji joins us next. Dave Anji, who's I, I'm not sure. I don't know if he's been preaching. He's been out to see some. I don't know. He is decked out. We'll see in a tie. I've never seen a man in a tie. We'll take a break. I'll be right back here uh, on the Tom Dover Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City takes care of both male and female customers, but owner Kim Smith says they have a special care and concern for ladies. Being a female in what's considered a man's business, I understand the trepidation that women may have when they come to the shop. They feel like they don't know about cars, they might be intimidated, but that's not the way we do business. Everybody's treated the same. We take the time to explain anything that they have questions about, the repair, the process, the part. We want to make sure people are comfortable with what we're going to do to their vehicle and that they understand. We do cater to women in a sense. We have a real nice waiting room with nice Keurig coffee and flavored creamers, air-conditioned, cushioned seats, TV, everything a girl could want while she waits for her car to be fixed. American Import and Auto Repair in Johnson City open six days a week. Call today at 913-3111. It's Friday night at 7 o'clock. You've been involved in a car accident. You may be out of state on vacation or just a few miles from home. What do you do? Who do you call? At Farmers Insurance Group, one call is all you have to make. Hello, this is Jim Klein, an agent with Farmers Insurance. It's called One and Done. You don't have to wait till Monday morning to file a claim. You can make the initial call and we'll begin right away to help you. We assist you in moving the vehicle to a certified repair shop, getting you set up with rental car, and informing your agent. 
then here are the staff at Jim Klein Farmers Insurance. We follow the claim through to the end. It's that easy. One and done. We're your one and done location for all your insurance needs. Auto, home, life, commercial, workers' comp, and bonds. We can help you with all your insurance needs. Give me a call today, Jim Klein, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance at 247-5400, your one and done location in Kingsport, 247-5400. Any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Over 10 to choose from. Perfect for having the gang over to watch the big game, birthday parties, church get-togethers, backyard gatherings, everything from fruit trays to garden salad trays to nuggets and chicken strip trays. And for the sweet tooth, try the cinnamon cluster or chocolate chunk cookie tray. So you see, any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A at the crossings in North Johnson City. I'm Tom Taylor. You are? Dave Angie. Well, we got coming up. It's a really cool. Every Thursday, it's the Championship Chevrolet Fritz. five-star football preview Come show. On, on get on you ready on. for high school and college football every Cole, week. Every Thursday, uh, you're going to be covering what for us? Be looking at the Big East Conference. We've got the press conference. Ooh, that will be Dobbins, Men's Sides, and all really those really great football teams in that conference. Up. Doug Fritz will be giving you the rest of the high school football picture every week. Then we got colleges covered. Who are we going to be covering? we got ETSU. We have Tennessee. We have Virginia Tech. All those. Carmichael's will be along to give us the big five games every week because it is a five-star football preview show. So hope you'll join us every Thursday right here in the showroom of Champion Chevrolet. Dave and I will be co-hosting the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview. And then on top of all that, we're going to have a picking panel where you're going to match us uh, against you and you on against on us. And I can't wait because they don't have a chance. You're going to go up against us. We're going to pick against you for some really cool prizes. And they don't have a chance, do they? No chance at all. It's going to be fun times. Oh, yeah. Putting toe to what? Toe to the leather, man. Toe to the leather, Ready man. To go. Ready to go. Can't wait. Again, join us every Thursday right here. It's a maiden voyage. Cool show. Uh, Co-hosted by Dave Angie and myself. It's the Champion the Chevrolet five-star football yeah. preview coming up every Carl Thursday Stevens right here from the Champion today. Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson hey, City. Can't wait to see you use on the show. Use the platform. And I would agree. So there we go. The Tom Taylor Sports Show. Look right there. You better look real quick because you don't see that very often. Look right there. There he is. Hello, everybody. There you go. That's my man right there. I love this guy. Tim Copenhaver and Andy. Andy's off on assignment. That seems to be a pretty frequently statement. He's off. <laughs> He's off on assignment. He'll be back next week. But uh, Cletus is here. Cletus is going to talk here just a minute. Tim, of course, the man you see on the TV commercials. How did they do that? Angie's with a tie on. He now works for the News and Neighbors. He's made a career switch. And so... He's went from T-shirts and flip-flops to a tie and looking sharp. Mrs. Uh, I can see why Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Andre got all tore up back in the court days. You're sharp. <laughs> You're sharp dressed guy there, big guy, looking good. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Just uh, adapting, like you yeah. said, kind of a, tr a career switch. But sure. uh, just thrilled to be at the News and Neighbor. Great uh, family-owned paper there, and uh, just serving the community, trying to come across as many. Good news stories as you can find. You know, a lot of people uh, find the bad news, you know, pretty easily on Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know, a lot of other places. But, uh, yeah, we focus on the good news there, and sometimes you need a good dose of that. So definitely glad to be on board, glad to be uh, be writing some stories over there. What kind of circulation does the news neighbor have? Uh, it's over 30,000. Over 30,000. 30, 35, I think, 31. Wow. Somewhere in there. Yeah, it's uh, it's over 30, I can tell you that. And, uh, yeah, you can pick it up. If you don't get it, um, you know, delivered to your home, you can pick it up at a lot of grocery stores. I know, uh, you know, Ingalls and Kroger, a lot of those other places, Food City, seen it out there too. So, uh, yeah, definitely pick it up if you see it. Now, for folks out there who go, well, 
what does it cover? I mean, it's based in Johnson City, but it's more than just Johnson City News, right? It's Johnson City, Washington County. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, it just kind of covers the county area, which is really nice. You know, it's uh, kind of hard. Sometimes you feel like you're getting spread thin at times. So to be mm-hmm. able to focus on what's going on here at home uh, is really nice. And, you know, th- there's no shortage, no shortage of stories, no shortage of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, if you're worried about what's going on here in Johnson City and here in Washington County, you know, this is the place to go because we, we cover it pretty well every week. Yep. I love reading the paper myself, and, of course, uh, it's a must-have for me because I get a lot of information and a lot of, uh, as he said, community events that you don't always see any other place, but it's always in there, things going on. So good paper, and he's involved in it now. He's also involved, of course, and you just saw the commercial and the promo of the uh, Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show. Tonight is the maiden voyage, and I'll be honest, I've spent the whole last two three weeks devoting myself to Bristol Motor Speedway, as I'm supposed to, as their uh, – part-time employee but so now we're focused back on this show and so we're going to get it hit it the ground running tonight doug fritz is going to join us talking about all the different high school games dave's going to co-host it with me he's going to be talking about the big east Con- it is the big east isn't it, is what it they is call it. yes sir yeah, big yeah. east conference which is aka dobbins minute and science hill both a big game tonight well not tonight but tomorrow night uh you've got dobbins minute hosting oak ridge and science hill on the road a couple of top 10 teams playing down at utawa against the owls so well, we'll talk about that. Doug's got the rest of the big high school games tonight between 6 and 8. Carmichael, as you said, is going to join us uh, talking about the five coaches. He's going to give us our college football big five games every week. Uh, there isn't any this week per se, but next week, whew, got a bunch of them cranking up to kick off the season. So Carmichael joins us tonight about that. Kevin Harmon joins us later in the show, too, tonight. It's from 6 to 8 o'clock right here at Champion Chevrolet in the showroom we are right now. Kevin will join us, give us a UT update. Of course, next week it will be a full-fledged preview against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. So it's here, the final week, to get tuned up. And uh, I know we've got news tonight about the Florida Gators and their quarterback platooning and what's going to go on there. And so NC State. (laughs) 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 From way over there on the other side of the room, we see the Gator chomp from Mr. Copenhaver. So... um, I asked him one time, and I asked the little one, his little his son, I said, you like the Seminoles? I thought I was going to get attacked. They said, what? <laughs> I mean, they both just flipped the switch real quick. So uh, it runs deep. And so we'll talk about the Florida Gators and their quarterback situation. Uh, North Carolina State had let some players go. Uh, I mean, it is the season. Uh, of course, Tennessee lost their uh, big tight end for at least for the first couple of games. So I lost chance all earlier in the season. Kevin will cover all that. So. It's tonight, so if you want high school and college, uh, this is the place to come and listen and be with us. Of course, it's also archived. You can go back and watch it. It's all going to originate right here at the Champion Chevrolet Showroom, again, at 6 to 8 o'clock tonight. And so uh, Dave will be back and looking forward to, to working with him all season long. And some big football games last week, some big football games coming up again uh, this week, tomorrow night, obviously, in high school. So we'll save that for tonight. That's why you got to come back and watch us and listen to us here from 6 to 8 tomtaylorsports.com or the Tom Taylor Sports Show on Facebook. Like us and share us and I know Dave does and I know Champion Chevrolet does so we appreciate that very, very much. Alright, NASCAR. Let's jump in and talk a little NASCAR. Uh, great weekend. You know, whether you like Kyle Busch or not a lot of folks didn't like the fact he swept it but you got to appreciate what the man did and so I, the crowd was fantastic. The atmosphere was electric and it was almost back to the old Bristol and uh, the biggest crowd the whole season so far on the NASCAR circuit. It surpassed the Daytona 500 crowd, so just a great weekend, I thought, in Bristol for for all the fans. Yeah, it really was, and, uh, you know, Kyle Busch, and and like you say, love him or hate him, but you have to be able to respect the way he drives a race car, and, you know, we we talked about that, uh, you know, just you watch the truck race. I think the most entertaining thing that can happen, maybe in all of sport, is Kyle Busch getting a speeding penalty and getting sent to the back of the field Mm -hmm. because he slices and dices his way back through there. And we were watching him do it in the truck series, and then the Xfinity race as well, he got sent to the back and had to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just... uh, it, it's amazing to watch. He puts his race car in positions on the track where you swear he's going to get caught up in something, but he's got enough car control to put it just about anywhere on that racetrack. You know, I think that's really what set him apart this past weekend, you know, or this past week was the fact that, you know, anywhere he needed to go to make a pass on the track, he could do it. And we've talked about that before with the new sticky stuff on the bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all about having a driver that's comfortable on, on either part because you're going to run across some slower traffic at some point that you're going to have to get around or the guy in, in second place is going to be able to, to get past you and the thing about Kyle Busch is you know he's the one that he can go low when he needs to he can run the middle 
he can go high. And, and I really love how he gets up on that high line and drives downhill kind of out of the corners. He kind of cut, makes a diamond, kind of cuts off the corners a little bit there. And uh, it was on full display. But we were talking about, okay, he did it in truck and Xfinity. We are saying there's no way he's going to be able to go around cup cars the same way. But, you know, he started far back in the field. And, man, I, I, it didn't take long, and he was up there. And, and he was definitely the class of the field. And, uh, you know, I think that that sweep was the, the sweep that he did was uh, was well deserved. I think, like he said in the post race, it's tougher than the first one, mm-hmm. if if that's imaginable. And uh, it, it was made tough on him by Eric Jones, who's an up and coming driver. And when those two are on the same team next year, it, you know, in similar equipment, they're, I think both of them are going to put on a show. The last one of our thirty laps of the Saturday night race, the Bass Pro Shop NRA Night Race, you saw former, well, yeah, former Gibbs, no, not former, but going to be soon to be ex-Gibbs driver Matt Kenseth racing against the guy that's taking his place at Gibbs and then of course Kyle Busch so all three of that last 25-30 laps they were getting with it and you know what amazed me was that he was passing these guys in the turns it's one thing getting straight away we are going like this 24 to 30 degree banking the track's only 43 feet wide at any point and you're like this in a turn come tickling three and fours we did most of the passing and you're going, eh, what, 110, 112 miles an hour, somewhere through there in the turns. And he's splitting two. Then late in the cup race, he had two cars, had a uh, uh, lap car in front of him, a slower car. So he splits these two and then slingshots around, goes up on the high side, as Dave said, and goes up on the high side and passes him and drops back down. So in essence, he passed three cars in about 500, 600 yards of racing. I mean, the guy's incredible. Again, whether you like him or not, the bottom line is he gets it done, and so uh, my only, of course, he's my driver, and the only thing I think he should learn how to lose. You can't win them all, so when you come in second or third, just take it. Act like a champion and move on, but, you know, I, if I could sit down with him, that's what I would tell him. But other than that, uh, you can't uh, you can't knock the man for the passion he has because he says, Joe Gibbs pays me to win races. That's what I'm out there to do. I'm not out there just to drive around, pussyfoot around. As he says, I'm here to drive and win races, so. He does it. They're off this week. I guess some camps are tickled they're off. Some camps wishing to get back out on the uh, back out on the track like Joey Logano and Clint Boyer and Matt Kenseth and, and Daniel Suarez and some of these guys on the outside looking in. The pressure's on. Darlington and Richmond, two tough tracks, and then the chase starts. So uh, I'd say there's some uneasy people right now in some of those camps. I think there are. You know, I, I think if you're kind of on the outside looking in or, or very close to, to getting in, especially if you're somebody that flat out needs a win, uh, not a terrible time for a week off because, you know, you can get back to the shop and really focus in. And, and there are two different racetracks. And I, I know all these drivers, and they won't admit this, they'll say, we're, we go to try to win every week at every track. But, you know, if you're uh, if you're Kenseth and you know the short track program at, at Gibbs has been, you know, uh, at top level for a long time, especially at Richmond, you know, that's probably the race they're focusing on right now. They're probably in the wind tunnel. They have the you know all the equipment they have to make race cars fast on different tracks. They're probably – putting all their eggs in the Richmond basket where there's other teams, possibly Logano or, or some others that might be putting their eggs in the basket or trying to be good at Darlington and get the win there, you know. So, But either way, to have a week off, to be able to get yourself set up and say, okay, you know, we're going all in here, we're, we need a win, um, you know, I think those those teams probably appreciate that. Maybe if you're Kyle Busch and you're rolling, you know, you're out here, you're winning races, uh, maybe you don't want a week off at this point, you know, to uh, – to kind of break up your rhythm a little bit, especially with two races left until the playoffs. So probably a lot of different mindsets from, from the different drivers as they go into this uh, this off week. Folks said he was arrogant to get up on top of the car up there and bring out a broom and do a sweep motion onto the start-finish line. But, you know, <laughs> the guy pulled off something that's not been done only twice in the history of this track up here. And, you know, I, I think I'd probably do the same thing. I mean, why would you not? You've earned it. I mean, you've won three tough races at the toughest track in NASCAR. And then, you know, he battled this young kid, Eric Jones, who fought him all night long. Jones was trying to make history. No rookie has ever sat on the pole and won a race in the Cup Series at Bristol, or in any series, that matter. So he was almost getting ready to pull off history, too. So uh, I don't understand people say, you know, he got too cocky and too flashy and too flamboyant. I mean, what he did, even Daryl Waltrip says, man, you know, I've seen a lot of racing at Bristol. I was the king of Bristol, but he said Kyle Busch did things up here this weekend that I'd never seen. Yeah. He said he did stuff Earnhardt never did. You know how, how, what that means to the racing fan base when you start talking about Dale Sr. But anyway, Kyle Busch gets it, nails it down. They move on after this week to Darlington. Tough track. They call it the Black Widow, the, the track too tough to tame. Then they move into Richmond for that Saturday night race. And then the chase starts. So uh, 
I thought Bristol did a great job of honoring Dale Jr. I was a little disappointed on how he reacted on driver intros. He just kind of said thanks. I thought, man, we've got a scholarship up here, put out a an interactive museum for you, and we've kind of had the card stunt, and yeah. you know, it's his favorite track. I was waiting for him to say, you know, thank you, I love you, Bristol. But he just said, basically, just said thanks. And I thought, nah, I think I'd have done a little bit more than that yes. if I was him, but. He may be tired of this because every track he goes to, they're doing, they're getting ready to do a bunch of stuff for him in Darlington and Richmond, and so, you know, he may be over it. I don't know, but yeah, I would have thought he would have done a little bit more in Bristol. It's it's definitely tough, you know, it's tough on him. And the other factor is, you know, and, and this this is right. It's been a tough season for them. He knew he was climbing in a race car that wasn't going to win that race, too. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know he didn't say it, but he knew it because he was out there in practice. I think anybody looked at the practice numbers. <laughs> realized they were off again this week you know and they were off from the minute they got off of the hauler there and and that's something when you talk to to race teams they talk about how tough bristol is because you know you show up you take that thing off the truck you know friday morning you get one practice you know and and you're trying to trying to work things out with that car and and you know get things set up but if you're so far off you know you don't have any time before qualifying to really make any big fixes and like he said post race he said you know there's nothing with track bar and, and there was nothing with the, the tools we had in the pit the pits that could have fixed that race car you know that's something that just goes back to the shop and so i think he he kind of knew it wasn't it wasn't going to be the fastest car in the world and uh it was a long night for him and i think he knew he had a long night ahead when he was in driver intros and uh, you know i think it's a shame that that it went out that way for him but uh you know at least you know being out and being able to be around the fans and go through the tracks one more time. I think that's a better way to go out than, than missing the whole second half of the season last year. Well, Bill, we're talking to our buddy Dave Ange again tonight. It's the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview Show. Can't wait. High school and college. It's every week, not just tonight. Every Thursday from here on in, uh, from six o'clock to eight o'clock, right here in the showroom at Champion Chevrolet, and and uh, we've got us a snazzy backdrop we're going to have next week, and uh, we'll do it with what we've got to this week but next week we're going to have a, a big old champion snazzy backdrop because we're very proud to be here at, at champion chevrolet and some great high school football games and college football games we'll talk about tonight so uh, we'll uh, tease you now but talk more about it then so i hope you'll join us right here where we are now tom taylor sports.com or also on the facebook page tom taylor sports show and again like us and share it and we appreciate that very much our numbers continue to climb and we're very uh, pleased about that very humbled as well so Looking forward to this. We've got the pick and panel going to crank up, and uh, that'll start tonight. You can pick for the games, not this week, but next week, because next week we start in earnest college football, high school football. So every, uh, every show starting next week will be five high school to pick from and five college. Winner gets a, a $25 prize, which is that ain't, that ain't shabby. I mean, we'll, we're going to probably add to that as the show goes on got some other folks and we want to put a little extra into the pot but all you have to do is go on the appropriate page timeplaysports.com and hit the uh, you'll see the pick and panel contest and just go down and just click uh, there's no no points no we don't want scores we just want to know who you think is going to win between the uh, teams will be five college and five pro, or five high school rather and that'll be next week but the show starts tonight uh let's see boxing mayweather and uh mcgregor what that's coming up this weekend what do you think Boxing, right? <laughs> let's let's put that in quotation marks. This is uh, this is going to be a spectacle right here, and you know you only have one boxer. That's the problem. You get you know I don't have a boxing match with with one boxer, but there'll be two of them out there. And and the thing is, and this is what they're trying to sell the whole fight on, you know, for people to to buy the pay per view, uh, that McGregor has the punching power to land one shot early. And, and end the whole thing, and he does. He does have that that punching power. They they've gone with the lighter gloves to kind of up the ante there. Say, hey, th- this might be the guy. For years, people have wanted to see somebody, you know, knock Mayweather's block off, and this is a guy who can do it. I mean, legitimately. But I, I just I get excited a little bit, and then I stop and think, okay, does he have more punching power than all these other guys over the years who have mm-hmm. who have been in the ring with Mayweather and haven't been able to lay a glove on the guy? And, and nobody has hardly. Back, I guess it was uh, Sugar Shane Mosley years ago. Uh, I think he either wow. knocked him down or actually landed a shot. And it's been years since he's been hit, his mm-hmm. defensive style of boxing. So, you know, you got a guy in there that can land a punch, but you have another boxer that's the best in the world, maybe in history, of not getting hit. And, you know, at some point, once uh, his opponent, uh, McGregor's punched out, then, you know, it'll just turn into, you know, he'll, he'll be a punching bag for the rest of the way, however long Mayweather wants to carry this fight along. So, you know, if, if he, you know, if he just wants to toy around a little bit, this could go six rounds, but I'd imagine it'll be much shorter than that. So the fight's not going to match the hype, basically. No, no, no this, <laughs> no, this is, uh, 
you know, th this is about the money. You know, you hear people in sports all the time say it's not about the money. I think everybody here all agrees, yeah, it's about the money. About you know, the money. it yeah. is, and, and it's going to be, I'll tell you, it'll be a great show. I just don't know how long it's going to last. Talking to Dave Anji, of course, the news neighbor from here in Johnson City, again, serving Johnson City, Washington County, circulation paper of 30000 and so he's now on board uh, making a career change with the news neighbor. Also co-host of the show tonight. We'll start at 6 o'clock, go from 6 to 8 every Thursday night. So if you want to know about high school football tonight, Doug Fritz will have all the, uh, what, 5A, 4A, 3A games, the big games in the region. Dave's going to take a look at the Big East Conference. And, of course, that would involve the Dobbins Minutes and the Science Hills and who they're playing and the other games in the conference as well. This is another non-conference Friday night, tomorrow night. Then we start conference play next week. And so well, Dave will have those games, plus everything else we got going on. We're going to kind of be a two-headed monster on this show. Uh, Carmichael will be talking, as we said earlier, about five college coaches on the hot seat and some big games throughout the course of the ACC and SEC and Big Ten seasons. He feels like it's the three best conferences in college football. I would tend to agree. Uh, also, Kevin Harmon will have an update for you on what's going on with the uh, Tennessee Vols getting ready for Georgia Tech. And Joe Vento, hope to have Joe on. Uh, they're going to be naming the new football stadium today corporately. Uh, the naming rights are going to be announced in a 5.30 press conference at East Tennessee State. So hopefully Joe will be able to give us a call in and let us know uh, what that is or who's going to be on the on the face now of the new football stadium at East Tennessee State. They open up against Limestone College next week and already been announced as a sellout. Uh, Scott Carter's new athletic director at East Tennessee State, which I think is a, a great move. So some good things going on in the Buck camp. And Joe Vento is uh, hopefully going to get him on tonight by phone to talk for a few minutes as well. Uh, we talked NASCAR. We talked again uh, the boxing match with McGregor and Mayweather, such as it is. Uh, yeah, there you go. I like he does his little <laughs> fingers. Yeah, uh, boxing, if you will. NBA. You got Irving going to Boston and Isaiah Thomas coming to Cleveland. What's your take on all that? That's an interesting trade right there. I, I think Cleveland might end up being the winner on that. Um, I don't think there's any way that they were going to keep Kyrie Irving beyond this season. Um, you know, and from what I understand with Boston, you know, they didn't want to get into a long-term deal with uh, Isaiah Thomas, you know, even though uh, he led them to the top seed in the East last year. There, there just was a thought moving forward by Danny Ainge that, you know, that wasn't the way he wanted to build his team. So, you know, the question becomes from Boston's side, did they give up too much? Because they gave up, um, you know, a, a draft pick from the Nets that you have to assume, if not a number one pick, it's going to be a very high in the lottery. Um, you know, and, that, and that's now going to Cleveland, along with a big seven-footer, a European guy that, that helped them, and, you know, um, a couple other really good players. So that's all going over to Cleveland. Um, you know, and then so they get the benefit of those those building blocks. See how those guys fit in. They get that really high draft pick, which they have. Let's be honest about this: if LeBron decides to to bail and and not exercise his option, they'll have they'll be getting a premier player in to rebuild around. You know, when you're drafting top five, which is where that Nets pick should be, you'll be able to to rebuild, and they may help to sign Isaiah Thomas long term as well. So you have more in place than you did last time LeBron left and just left that team you know decimated. So they're they're kind of covered either way, whether LeBron stays or whether he goes. What they also did was they got a lot of cap room. You know, I, I think they cleared they cleared some cap room there. Uh, so, what we're looking at is they they have flexibility now, with or without LeBron, to be able to keep that team at a high level. And I think that's a lesson that they learned from last time with LeBron James. Will he stay or will he go? They weren't prepared for that. You know, for the option of him taking off and going to Miami, and they really really struggled till they came back. So, uh, interesting. I, it's one of those trades you look at and you say. You know, looking at where both teams are at, I, th I think it could be a win-win. Boston's going to be a much different team this year, but you know, I I, I think that with Kyrie Irving, that's a premier player uh, that they have in in the fold now, and um, you know, I think both teams will end up being as good or around where they were last year. Last story before I let him go. Of course, we'll be back tonight at six o'clock, both those for the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview Show. NAACP's interim president, Derek Johnson, has officially requested a formal meeting with NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to discuss NFL players and their ability to exercise their First Amendment rights. Now, according to a letter sent to the league by the NAACP, the meeting will specifically focus on Colin Kaepernick's perceived blackballing by the league in light of his protest last season. Also questions the silencing of NFL players' platforms, citing Tommy Smith and John Carlos Carlos's black power salute at the 1968 Olympics, among other examples. Kaepernick's lack of a job has raised many eyebrows throughout the offseason, particularly with the quarterbacks being signed ahead of him. Johnson penned a concern regarding Kaepernick's First Amendment rights. 
and also strongly insinuated that his protest was the sole cause of him not being signed as an NFL player. So they want to sit down with Goodell and have a visit, and your thoughts on all this? Well, to me it's interesting. You know, Kaepernick, um, you know, if this had happened immediately following, you know, them going to the NFC Championship game in the Super Bowl, then the next season he protests and he can't get a job. That's one thing. I mean, you know, his his production fell off quite a bit. Now, granted, um, you know, there are some guys who are getting quarterback jobs in the NFL whose numbers don't match Kaepernick's numbers, uh, you know, and people talk about First Amendment rights. Everybody's got First Amendment rights. You have the right to, to say what you want. I don't think that's being infringed upon. I, I don't think these players are not being allowed to do any demonstration they want to before the game. Now, the consequences of your First Amendment rights, that's another thing. You know, I mean, I can go out and express myself, you know, any way I want to. Now, whether I get to keep my job or get another one, you, you know, it makes it a little bit tougher, you know. So so there are some some things there that, that I think uh, come into play. Um, you know, with Kaepernick, it, it is... I think it would be a little naive to say that, you know, his outspokenness has nothing to do with why he's not getting a job. But I think when you're in a situation when there's two comparable quarterbacks available, um, you know, then, then they're going to they're gonna go with the other guy, and a lot of teams have. And uh, so that will be interesting moving forward to see how the NFL deals with this. Well, my take on this, I'm the, I'm the owner of a football team. And you got Tom Taylor and Dave Angie here, two quarterbacks or two running backs. What are the position? My goal as the owner of the team is to put a team out there to win a national, cha- I mean, a world championship. Period. So if I have Dave Angie and Tom Taylor, and I like Tom Taylor better than I like Dave Angie, or vice versa, because of your skill levels and what you can do to help my football team be better, that's my discretion. Whether I don't care whether you stand on your head and you're protesting the flag or potato soup or whatever your cause is that you're upset about, yeah. that. Forget all that. Between the chalks, as an owner of this football team, who is going to help me get to where I need to go, and that's to win a world championship. And if this guy, case in point, Colin Kaepernick, doesn't have the numbers that this guy has, to me, as an owner of the team, I have every right to pick the guy I want to pick to make my football team better, no matter what he's done, what his platform is, you know, what, what he believes in. You know, I'm looking at strictly between the chalks, who can help me get where I need to get, and that's to win a world championship. So... If Dave Angie is a better quarterback than Colin Kaepernick on the field with the stats, can he help me? I'm going to get him. If Kaepernick's better, I'm going to get him. But yeah. to blame it on the National Football League and say, you know, this guy's not getting his due right because he's protested, you know, it's up to, and this is me, but it's up to every owner of the NFL to pick the players they want. I don't think it has anything to do with what he said or hasn't said. Of course, folks are playing that into it. But as you just said, you go back and look, his numbers have dropped off dramatically since he played. Uh, so, and a guy told me up there at the race, made a great point. We're sitting around talking about it during some downtime. He said, since this guy hasn't played, he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. He's gone vegetarian. He so he not he may not be able to take the hits and the pounding that he did before because before he's a pretty big, solid guy, but yeah. he has lost a lot of weight. So maybe they're taking that into consideration as well. But but the owners are saying, look, we're not picking Kaepernick because he's not what we need to fit the, fill the void for our football team. Other folks say, and in this case, the NAACP says, you're not picking him because he, he protested the national anthem. Well, I, I would take one exception there. You know, I think there's – I think when you're talking about putting teams together, I think that you're talking more from a coach's standpoint than, than an owner's because I think for owners it's a little more complicating, uh-huh. you know, with, with them. I think – like you look at the situation with Baltimore where John Harbaugh really wanted Kaepernick. He talked a lot about wanting Kaepernick. Obviously his brother coached Kaepernick at San Francisco – and could tell him, you know, he probably went to him, what's the deal with this guy? What's, what's his character like? What's his makeup like? Obviously got a good response, got a thumbs up, because he was in a press conference saying, hey, I hope we sign Kaepernick. You know, I really do. He could help this, this football team. We worked him out. I see, I see he can help us. So then, you know, push comes to shove. The decision's made. The owner nixes it, and they, they sign somebody else. So, you know, I think with owners, and this is true in all sport now, you know, it's so corporate sponsorship of – you know your team they, they buy big blocks of tickets there's all this other stuff that goes on um you know in terms of sponsorship that kind of keeps things afloat and brings money in you know owners weigh that a lot more so i think they're a little more sensitive to issues if they have somebody that's controversial and it's it's kind of a fine line that they walk there in, in terms of you know who gets who gets another chance who can help the football team and who looks like they would be an investment that might end up costing them on the business side of things. So, yeah, it's uh, that's the dynamic at work. You have the guys that are out there dealing with the players on the field, and they're, you know, 
they'll give anybody a second chance that can help the football team. They're looking for bigger, stronger, faster at every position. But then, you know, the owners make decisions. And I think that's where, where this is aimed at. And, you know, I'm curious to see what happens. And, you know, I think the day will be the day will come soon when they do the national anthem at NFL games and there's no players, coaches on the field. It'll just be they keep the players and coaches in the locker room till the national anthem's over, then bring them out. Because, you know, from a standpoint where they're dealing with as many corporations and, and advertising such a big part of professional sports nowadays, you know, I, I think that would be a way they would see to alleviate um, the whole thing going on. Or up at the track, a couple of people I was talking to said it may come the day they just say, hey, let's just don't play it. And I think yeah. you'll have a complete mutiny if that happens. But Yeah, that would be uh, a problem. I, I think it's more likely they'll just leave them in say the everybody room. stay in the locker room. Come on out after, you know, we'll go for it. And, I, uh, I, would, be good I, I that. think that's the compromise, and that's, um, you know, that's what's going to end up happening. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happened uh, at the start of the regular season this year. That's why we have him on this show. He's good. He's wearing a tie, <laughs> looking sharp. Come back tonight, aren't you? Hey, man, I'll be here. I'm looking forward to this show. It's going to be yeah, a lot of fun. Too. So, me too. Uh, if you're wanting to know about high school football, we're going to jump into it in depth. Again, he's going to be talking about the Big East Conference all the games in the Big East Conference, and there's a bunch of them. Of course, it's non-conference week. The two highlighted games, obviously, be a couple of ranked teams, Science Hill traveling to Ottawa to Battle of the Isles, and Dobbins Minute coming uh, back home after losing Greenville to entertain the Oak Ridge Wildcats. So those will be the two focal points of the Big East Conference. But there's some other good teams in that league that he'll talk about that. Doug Fritz will join us by phone and talk about, as we said, the other games in 5A, 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A that involving our regional teams. And uh, we'll go through the rankings and the polls this week. We've got some teams ranked, and that's good for the first week of uh, Tennessee football. Got a lot of teams from Northeast Tennessee ranked. That's awesome. Carmichael will be along. Also, uh, Kevin Arnold will be along, Joe Avento. So it all comes up at 6 o'clock tonight here on the inaugural Maiden Voyage of the uh, Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show and brought to you by, of course, Tim and Andy and all the great folks here at Champion Chevrolet. So uh, I'll see you tonight. We'll be ready to roll at 6 o'clock. It'll be here before you know it. I'm jacked up. And and the picking panel, oh, we're going to tease them a little bit tonight. It's going to be us versus them, big guy. And I'm telling you right now, they're, we're going to smoke them because yeah. the picking panel starts next week, but the game's this week. But we're going to wear them out. So I've got I've got equ- equations and formulas and Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, come on. Power rankings. You, um, that calculator's been smoking all week long. Did, did, did. It, now, if this I, team I plays a, this team and <laughs> I use an abacus still. But st- hey, it's effective <laughs> thousands of years. Yeah. I'm I'm sliding those beads around so we uh, oh, we're going to figure it out. I love this guy. <laughs> Coming up next, we've got Cletus Green's going to join us when we get out of here. We're live again at Champion Chevrolet. Run a little bit over. We can do that. We're on Facebook. And he joins us next here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen originated in Australia, where sunscreen standards are the strictest in the world. Although our products are now manufactured here in the U.S., we continue to adhere to the most stringent Australian standards to offer the best and broad-spectrum sun protection. Blue Lizard, the brand most recommended by pediatricians and dermatologists. Our smart bottle turns blue in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. You bring the sun, Blue Lizard brings the magic. It's Chevy Summer Drive to unbelievable savings at Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City. With a selection of over 600 new Chevys to choose from, don't miss out on the Chevy Summer Drive sale. 17 Silverado Crew Cab 1LT, 11,000 off MSRP. 17 Equinox Traction Traverse, 5,000 off MSRP. 17 Cruising Sonic, 25% off MSRP. Shop us online 24-7 and don't forget our Saturday parks and service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City where we leave you asking, how do they do that? At Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, they treat thousands of patients each year dealing with diabetes and its effects. Diabetes overtaking our nation and leaving a path of destruction behind. Through wound care, office visits, and preventive care, they see most of the patients after a problem arises. Using diabetic footwear, such as shoes and inserts, a great way to prevent or prolong skin breakdown and amputation. At Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, they use only custom molds from patient mold inserts, which further ensure a great recovery, or better yet, prevents a wound from happening. They use custom molded shoes, bracing, custom inserts, and extra depth diabetic shoes to prevent wounds or other skin issues from beginning. Call today, 1-800-524-4447. 39 years, six locations, one family. Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, 1-800-524-4447. 
Any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Over 10 to choose from. Perfect for having the gang over to watch the big game, birthday parties, church get-togethers, backyard gatherings, everything from fruit trays to garden salad trays to nuggets and chicken strip trays. And for the sweet tooth, try the cinnamon cluster or chocolate chunk cookie tray. So you see, any day is a good day to get a tray from Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A at the crossings in North Johnson City. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. I'm Tom Taylor. You are Dave Angie. And we got coming up is go. a really cool every Thursday. It's the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football <laughs> Preview Show. Oh, get oh, you oh, ready oh. for high school and college football it. every week. Every Pretty Thursday, real. you're going to be covering what for us? Be looking Forever at the Big East Conference. Five-year commitment, Ooh. or that would be Dobbins, yeah. Science Hill, all those great football teams in that conference. Doug so, Fritz will be giving you the rest of the high school I'm football about the show. picture every week. I think then we got colleges covered. We're going to be covering. We got ETSU. We have Tennessee. We have Virginia Tech. I've spent so much time. All those. Carmichael will be along to give us the big five but, uh, games every week because it is a five-star football and preview show. So hope you'll join us every neighbor. Thursday I'll right see. here in the show from Champion Chevrolet. The, uh, Dave and I will be co-hosting the Champion Chevrolet so five-star football preview. And then on top of all that, we're going to have a picking panel where you're going to match us against you and you against us. 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 And I can't wait because the masses. they don't have a chance. So next you're going to go up against us. We're going to pick against you for some really cool prizes. And they don't have a chance, do they? No chance at all. It's going to be fun times. Oh, yeah. Putting total to what? Absolutely. Total leather, man. Total the leather, Ready man. To go. Ready to go. Can't wait. Um, Again, join us every Thursday uh, right here. It's a maiden voyage. Um, cool show. Co-host of the Dave Angie myself. It's okay. the Champion Chevrolet Five Star Football Preview. Local person, coming up every Thursday right here from Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Motor Mile in Johnson City. Can't wait to see you on the Ten, show. Five and five. There it is right there, fans. And, of course, you can see who will win the next big game, TomTotalSports.com backslash football. And it'll win each week. Of course, you click on right there, Champion Chevrolet. This is really cool. Jeremiah's done it again. You click right there on the champion nameplate, for lack of a better term. It takes you right to the champion Facebook page, I mean to the uh, website page. So uh, he's done it again, my man. Again, Jeremiah Clark. So there it is, the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show. There's the empty seat that should be occupied by Cletus Green. I hope he's coming. Mr. Copenhagen, can you uh, direct his attention this way? Oh, he's not over there. So, uh, <laughs> Cletus waved at me, and then he he may have. Is he going to lunch, you reckon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this may be the biggest. They're all said, we want to hear Cletus. <laughs> <laughs> Here he comes. There's my man. Shape the ball. It's it's. There you go, my man. <laughs> Boy, you you've drawn a crowd over here all of a sudden. They want to hear my man talking, but we're not going to talk football. We're going to save that tonight. We come back in here for the opening show at six o'clock. But right, hit that bell. Go ahead. Cletus is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. So look at them. They're all gathered around. <laughs> You've drawn a bigger crowd than Andy does. So there you go. Uh, but you don't draw a bigger crowd than Kristen. When Kristen's on, it's like bees on honey, those circles. So let's talk about it. We've got Malibus. We've got trucks. Uh, again, we're winding down the month of August. It's been a good month. And so what's uh, what's what's going on in the sale paper you wanna, that jumps out at you? Well, the biggest thing we do is trucks. Uh, we sell trucks. We've got a huge inventory of trucks. And... Uh, that's most of what we do. SUVs, 
uh, cruises have been really hot there's some excellent stuff going on right now with the crews and uh, that's made them probably hotter than anything in the last week or 10 days but, right, 2017 uh, cruise all right for folks out there go okay what's a cruise in your humble opinion what's the selling point of a cruise well economically sound reliable uh the, right now the price makes them very much so uh they're priced uh cheaper than some of the cars that are far far less car you could buy a cruise uh the same kind of money you can our smaller sonics so uh, it just makes them a buy. Who would be an ideal customer for a cruise? A small family or an elderly couple? Who who would be driving a cruise uh, right we now? We sell those cars from people buying them for their 16-year-olds, and we had a lady in here the other day, 94 years old, and bought one. Bought so a cruise. We, we pretty much have done the whole spectrum of anybody with a driver's license. The, the car will fit them, uh, different equipment, of course, but uh, straight drives, the automatics, you can get sunroofs, depending on what you need. But uh, we, have, we have really have the gamut with that car it covers everybody four door four door cruise right now 2017 you can walk in here and save 5100 dollars right off the sticker to get it started a 2017 cruise tell me about the 2017 the pickup trucks the colorado we always talk about the silverados but give me a sales pitch and tell me the selling points of a colorado lt that's on sale four by four you're going to save four thousand dollars walk in here and and purchase yourself a 2017 colorado lt well the lt Colorado or any of the Colorados are excellent driving trucks. Uh, they ride and drive with a big truck. Uh, you know, anybody that doesn't want to drive a big truck is where, where they're going to fall into because it has that feel, has a ride and drive of a big truck, doesn't have, you know, of course, better gas mileage, a lot easier to park, maneuver around. We also, in the Colorados right now, we have got uh, five of the new ZR2s, which is a factory lifted truck, uh, you know larger wheels tires it's got a far more aggressive look uh, the front bumper it has a serious off-road uh, suspension under it it's not just a raised Colorado it is a you know it can articulate uh, if you want to take it off-road and climb over things it has the ability to move around off-road far better than than anything we've had in a truck in many years Farmer's Almanac says 2018, more precipitation and cooler temperatures here in the Old Southeast, so I guess that translates to snow. I hope they're wrong, but if that is the case, pick them up trucks, you got them. Colorado goes good in the snow. Silverado's do as well. Yep, and if you get into that, we've also got a large selection of uh, 2018 uh, Equinoxes that are all-wheel drive. We've got a uh, large selection of 2018 uh, Traverses that are starting to show up. A lot of those are all-wheel drive. I've still got several 17 traverses that uh, have a little more money off of them than the 18s, and I've, a lot of those would be all-wheel drive. So you've got 17s, but the 18s are obviously coming in. Yes. They're here, and so you're trying to move out to close out the 17s and get them off the lot, make rooms for the 18s. One of those nameplates, I call them, is the 2017 Malibu LTs, and right now you're saving $5,500 off a 2017 Malibu LT. Malibu's been around for a long time, but again, they, they've jazzed them up, spiffed them up a little bit, Chevrolet has, so give me some bells and whistles about a Malibu. Well, the Malibu's an excellent car. It's uh, a little bit larger. It falls under your midsize. Uh, you know, great trunk volume as far as passengers comfort. Uh, they come in a uh, wide variety of uh, equipment packages. We also, one of them that they had at the sh that on display at the Speedway is a Redline Edition, which has a Malibu silver black wheels uh, it's got a small red racing stripe on each of the wheels the Malibu emblems are black and they have a red outline like our red line trucks that we have right now and uh, it makes a little sportier look than just your average Malibu so somebody that wants to have a little sportier side of their family car this will cover that yep it's the Malibu plates of course uh, one of those name plates for Chevrolet the 2017 Camaros are on sale saving over four thousand dollars on 17 Camaros and then uh, the Impala LT, another one of those long-standing Chevrolet nameplates, $7,700 you're going to save on the 2017 Impala LT. Uh, looking across the board off the top of your head here so far in August, we always talk about a lot of trucks, but as far as cars and sedans and SUVs, what's been a hot seller aside from the trucks so far this month? The cruise has been the hottest. Uh, we've done a little, we've had a little bit of Camaro business, people getting it in, you know, the back to school, they run the kids off so they buy them a car. Uh, I've got two 2018 ZL1 Camaros, 650 horse, uh, you know, 
basically a race car mm -hmm. as far as uh, performance abilities. Uh, same same engine as our Z06, uh, a little different price tag. So, uh, you know, got two of those in. I've got a white and a black that just got here. So, we got good and bad. Never done this. Before we get out of here, step me through. Let's start with the smallest one and work our way up. So, the smallest car on the lot in the Chevrolet would be a Sonic. That's a Spark. Small? Spark. Spark. All right, Spark. Then Sonic, Cruise, Malibu, Impala, SS. There you go. Tracks. Uh, the Trax is our smallest SUV. Okay. Then you go Equinox, Traverse, uh, Tahoe, Suburban. So for someone like me, if I was going to trade and get a, get into an SUV, which one do you think would fit my big old ham hocks? Well, I think an Equinox would probably go after what what you need because you you know you're not not a requirement to have a third seat, but the back seat you could sit in the back seat and ride hmm. at your height hmm. uh, with somebody your height in the front seat. Cool. So the, they have they have more interior volume than most uh, vehicles out there, even though there are midsize. Uh, so you know if you just need to be able to carry people and tall people, it gives you that ability. Equinox, the 2017s are on sale. You can save five thousand dollars now. The other neat thing about this, and we'll do this tonight when we come back for the show this evening, because everybody coming in making the purchase, they're bringing in their vehicles for trades, and so there's all kinds of. There's a ton of pre-owned vehicles here in the sale paper that are out here and ready to roll. And uh, gosh, I'm looking here without my glasses. The uh, Chevrolet Silverado pick'em up truck, 2014, Cadillac SRX certified, uh, Toyota Tacoma, Chevrolet Tahoe, Chevrolet Silverado. They've traded in. Uh, let's see, Chevrolet. Let me see here. What else I see without my glasses? There's a Camaro base, 1996 Camaro base. How about that? The old throw back to the Chevy Camaros. Uh, there's a cruise, 2016 cruise. So you got all kinds of pre-owned vehicles. And then also tell us about the website because you can go on the web and do, Kristen's not here today, so you can uh, do all kinds of things on that website. Um, you can request quotes. Yeah. Uh, there's a place you can send in uh, credit information if you want to get pre-approved. Of course, you can you know look at our inventory. We're 650 plus uh, new cars right now and probably 100 and 20 roughly used so uh, we've got quite a few here to look at we've got a large selection of Corvettes uh, huge selection of trucks we've got a, uh, a lot of cargo vans anybody that's actually you know trying to work and earn a living so uh, you know we, if, if not just spending money to enjoy their car uh, using their car to get there uh, we've got a lot of cargo vans uh, Chevrolet cargo vans in stock uh, the small City Express and the large uh, Express awesome it's all right here, Champion Chevrolet, the Bristol Highway Motor Mile. The website is championjc.com. The phone number is 423-282-2121. So uh, great job as always, my friend. Thanks for coming over here. And, uh, guys, we'll talk to you guys next week or tonight. Either one, if you're back around tonight, we'll get you back on. If not, we'll get you next week. We're here from 6 to 8 tonight, again, with the inaugural maiden voyage, the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show. So we're very excited about that. And we're excited about having Cletus Green on here with us, and he's a nice one. So Andy's been bumped, so we ran him off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Appreciate you, my friend. All right. Up. Thank you, yeah. Tom. Oh, yeah. Enjoy him very much, and again, enjoy coming over here. There you go. Hit that bell. I love it. We're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. We want to come back again and say thanks to the guest that made this show go today, and that would be we start off with the former NFL football player, Howard Stevens, and uh, again, appreciate him very much. Also, Steve McCauley from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, their big golf tournament coming up on September the 11th. We'll be there to broadcast the show from the Johnson City Country Club. Already 15 teams signed up, ready to go on September the 11th, Patriot Day. Uh, also, again, former NFL running back Howard Stevens joined us earlier. Greg Salyer, the Major League Baseball update. Carmichael joined us. He'll be back with us tonight on the uh, Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show. And also Dave Anji from the News and Neighbor joined us. So, uh, And also, obviously, just now, sales manager Cletus Green from right here at Champion Chevrolet. So we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. We'll be right back again. We'll crank this thing back up at 6 o'clock tonight. Hope you'll be back with us. And, again, the show will be archived. You can go back and watch it. We're going to take an in-depth look at high school football for this week. we got the football standings across the state of Tennessee, which local teams are involved. We'll take a look at the, oh, gosh, all the different regions. That will be Region 1, uh, let's see, Region 1, 6A, Region 1, 5A, 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A. 
and what happened last week, who's playing tomorrow night. Some are playing a couple of games tonight. We'll tell you all about that. And so there's one game tonight, Morristown East to Jeff County tonight. And so all that's coming up a little bit later on the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show from right here at Champion Chevrolet Showroom on the Bristol Motor Mile, Johnson City. Brought to you by Tim Copenhaver and Andy Dietrich and all the great staff members here and the folks making go here at the number one Chevy dealer in the state. Champion Chevrolet here in the Bristol Motor Mile, Johnson Zoo. So until 6 o'clock tonight, we come back in here, going to get us a little bite to eat at the old chicken coop, Chick-fil-A, and one of our great sponsors, and come back in here and get ready to roll. So until then, as we always tell you, we're out of time. We sincerely thank you for yours. Until we re-greet you at 6 o'clock tonight for our first show of the Champion Chevrolet five-star football preview show, this is Tom Taylor's always telling you, win or lose, be a good sport. We'll see you tonight right back here at 6 o'clock on Facebook Live and also TomTaylorSports.com. So long, everybody.